welcome everybody to game number three of the 2022 A pleasant good evening to you all from the Danbury Ice Arena for what promises to be an enter. Pleasant good evening to you all from the Danbury Ice Arena. The Hat Tricks and Binghamton Black Bears about set to go for game number three of the Empire Division Championship Series. The winner advances to the FPHL's Commissioner's Cup Championship Series to face the Carolina Thunderbirds. Hello and welcome to the Danbury Hatrix YouTube channel. We appreciate you sticking with us through a momentary technical difficulty alongside my partner in crime, Jim Cerny. I'm Chris Lynch and Jim, excitement when you have the chance to win a postseason series, it's nothing like it in the sports world. Uh, yeah, of course, to get here, the Hat Tricks had to stare down playoff elimination a couple nights ago, Saturday night here at an electric Danbury Ice Arena. And they did exactly that. Uh, a really tight, well-played game by both teams, but the Hat Tricks never trailed. 0-0 after one. They scored the first two goals of the game in the second period went up 3-1 early in the third and ended up with a couple empty net goals, winning by the score of 5-2. But wiped the slates clean, the 6-1 game one loss in Binghamton, the 5-2 home ice win in game two Saturday. It's all out the window. It's all for the marbles tonight. Two really, really good teams playing for the chance to move on to play for the Commissioner's Cup. And these are teams who have matched up very well against each other throughout the course of the season. Danbury 44-7-5 in the regular season. Binghamton 36-15-5, their regular season records. Worth noting, Danbury making zero lineup changes for tonight's game. A couple of pretty interesting lineup swaps on the Binghamton side of things with the defensemen swapped out. And Tyler Jurich dropped to the third line to play alongside Jesse Anderson and Brett Parker. So I think the thinking there, and again, we can't hop into the coaching staff's you know, collective mindset. Much as we would like to. As much as we would like to, but from... You know, from up here, from our vantage point, I think what Binghamton might be trying to do, especially on the road where the home team has the last line change, is that they may be trying to spread out their scoring depth. So they break up that top line, which has been so good throughout the season, which has been so good throughout the playoffs, and which did in the hat tricks in game one in Binghamton. Well, they were shut down in game two here in Danbury. So I think the mindset is spread out the scoring depth and now make Billy McCreary make some decisions on which lines, which defensive pairs he wants to put out against which Binghamton lines. I think that makes complete sense from their perspective. Let's quickly give you the starters for the hometown hat tricks. Michael Marchesson, Lucas Benedet, and Jacob Radcliffe, which has been the hottest line in the league and by a pretty fair distance as well. Johnny McDonald and Brendan Dowler get the starts on D. And who else but Brian Wilson gets the start in net for the hat tricks. Yeah, of course, Brian Wilson, the co-goalie of the year in the FPHL, gets the call. Talk about bounce-back performances. Not only did the whole team bounce back on Saturday from the 6-1 loss on Friday, but that started in goal where Brian Wilson was absolutely terrific, especially that scoreless first period when the hat tricks needed him to be. 
within the first 10 minutes, he stopped a breakaway, a partial breakaway, and several other really good scoring chances for the Black Bears. And I talked with Danbury goaltending coach Matt Voidy about that, and he said, I was watching closely in warm-ups, and I saw Willie was dialed in. I knew he was going to bounce back. And that's the confidence that this team has in him. And as Voidy said, this kid, if ever, rarely if ever, has two rough ones in a row. At least this season, he's been that good. They need another big night from him tonight. They've earned the benefit, he's earned the benefit of the doubt. Andrew Logar, Chad Lopez, and Mac Lewis start things off for the Binghamton Black Bears. Lopez has been a problem for the Danbury Hattricks, to say the very least. Well, he's been a problem for everybody so far in the postseason. He's had himself a real nice start. He was a dominant player in the first round for, for the Black Bears. And yeah, he's a tough, tough little guy to hold down. Though the Hattricks did a good job shutting him down, shutting down Tyler Jurich, shutting down uh, Malpe, shutting down Yates. A lot of their key guys were really held in check by the Hattricks uh, on Saturday. But now you got desperation on both sides, not just on one side. It's going to be electric tonight. And of course, Taylor Joseph draws back into the net for the Binghamton Black Bears as the officials are taking to the ice sheet. You hear the chorus of boos that are pretty common <laughs> across the FBHL yes. for the officials. Pretty common across all levels of the hockey. We'll take a breather, come back in a moment with the starting lineups for the Danbury Hattricks. Here from Danbury Ice Arena, Jim Cerny and Chris Lynch with you. And the Danbury Hattricks to a standing ovation at the Danbury Ice Arena are taking the ice for the biggest game of the season. It is win or go home, an elimination game for both the Danbury Hattricks and the Bingham, and Binghamton Black Bears. Game three of this best of three series. Binghamton winning the opener at home on Friday by the score of six to one. The Hattricks coming back, bouncing back on Saturday here at Danbury Ice Arena winning 5-2. And tonight it's game three. Let's check out tonight's Hattrick starters.
gentlemen, at this time we ask that you stand and remove your caps for the playing of the national anthem, beginning with the Canadian national anthem. And that, my friends, is my broadcast partner, Chris Lynch, for the second consecutive playoff game here at Danbury Ice Arena, delivering an awesome rendition of our national anthem. And we are just moments away from dropping the puck on a win or go home decisive game three between the Hattricks and the Binghamton Black Bears. Taylor Joseph is in goal to our right for Binghamton. They are dressed in their road whites trimmed in green and black. Taylor Joseph has been outstanding this season and he's been terrific in the playoffs. He is three and one, leads the FPHL in the postseason with a 1.77 goals against average, second in the league with a 942 save percentage and even in a loss the other night, he was terrific. 32 saves Saturday against Danbury. In goal to our left, as the Hattricks wear their home blacks trimmed in orange and white, is Brian Wilson, co-goalie of the year in the FPHL this season. He's three and one in the postseason, a 276 goals against average, and a 911 save percentage. Of course, he set an FPHL record this season by winning 31 games, and he was second in the league with a 268 goals against and a 919 save percentage. We are set to drop the puck with the call. Here is Chris Lynch. Thank you so much, Jim. The hat tricks win the opening draw. The puck is dropped. We're underway from the Danbury Ice Arena. Long pass ahead to Benedette. We'll whack it in from the red line. This is the line that has performed at its peak late down the stretch of the season. Combined for game winners against Delaware in the 
game that secured the division regular season championship. Up and knocked down by Radcliffe, floated in, caught and played cleanly by an awaiting Don Olivieri who moves up to the top pair alongside Jake Schultz. Pass ahead for Lopez, wanted Dowler. Dowler will gra grab it and ring it around the wall. Kuznetsov tries to sneak ahead. Schultz got a stick on it. DeBenedetta cross underneath for Kuznetsov, played across the red line. Gathered and went ahead for a second and a hard hit thrown by Johnny McDonald. Tyson Kirkby who cooked the hat tricks for breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Friday night in game one gets crunched. The puck comes out of play and we have our first stoppage of play. And as we touched on in the pregame, Chris, Hattrick's going with the same exact lineup. Why, why mess with a good thing? Same exact lineup is Saturday. Kyle Gonzalez again took warm-ups tonight. However, he's not quite ready to return. Possibly can get back in the lineup if the Hattricks win tonight, prolong their season, and head to the Commissioner's Cup final. But Gonzalez will sit out tonight for the fourth straight game. Winner of this game goes on to the Commissioner's Cup against the Carolina Thunderbirds. That's a point shot blocked by Gordy Bunnell to the far side corner. If Binghamton wins, they would begin the series in Binghamton. If Danbury wins, we would begin the series in Carolina. Yeah, hat tricks have home ice advantage throughout the entire postseason. Binghamton, the fourth seed of the four that made it to the respective division finals. All four of these teams capable of winning the Commissioner's Cup as Columbus took Carolina to the brink as Yates will glide in. Yates just is the pass. Shot blocked by Wilson out of play. And Jared Yao gliding into the net as well to help make the stop on that. Oh, boy. That is not what you want to see a minute 29 into the game. A prime scoring opportunity, a two-on-one against Brian Wilson. Great feed to Cam Yarwood. And Yarwood was trying to go right to that short side and Wilson was able to get his toe on it, his skate on it, and I believe it also hit the outside of the post after it hit Wilson, and then deflected up into the netting. Big stop by Brian Wilson to start this game. Sheehan on the draw with Anderson, who drops down to that third line, shot long on, it'll go to the end boards, tries the backhanded pass to Anderson. Pamela Leon to the board. Tobias Ojik with the check, Ojik, Got one of the empty netters in last night's game. Two of them for Dan Barry. It really was a 3-2 game with the additional goals going in with the goaltender pull to make it look not as close as it actually was. Both those teams were capable of winning it as the puck will bounce into the wall. Turned on net. Wilson with the stop. May have also hit the side of the goal as well as this will be flown across neutral ice. Schultz gathers it, holds it in the circle, and passes it over the middle and connects it with Olivieri. Had a power play goal on Friday. McDonald, the pass hit by Ojik. This is going to turn into an icing, and that's a pretty obvious one at that. Officially, shots on goal 0-0. Zero, zero. Officially, that's what it's uh, currently listed as. I know that they may have said that Yao may have gotten a piece on that breakaway, so it might have been a Yao stop instead of a Wilson shot, as I see Jim Cerny judging me. For that, that, was, that was a Brian Wilson <laughs> toe save. It and yes. a heck of a one at that. It should be counted as such. And that'll get added up on the board, I'm sure, as Lewis tried to win it. Ojik gets to the loose puck, dipped it across to Benedet out there. They were in the middle of changing lines as Kuznetsov will hurl this on net. They'll get the rest of that line on the ice as intended. 2.35, the time gone by here in the first. Both these teams just kind of feeling each other out. Picked off by De Benedet, thrown to the slot. Marshall Sand couldn't get there in time. De Benedet has to wait for it. He's offside. And De Benedet starting to jostle after the whistle with Andrew Logar. Do not want that. Again, that's, that's not the game that you want to play. You want to play physical. You want to stand up to the other team. You don't want to get into this post-whistle stuff. I asked Billy McCreary for one of his keys tonight, and he said, we need to be disciplined, we need to play our game, because when we do that, we can beat anyone, anytime, anywhere. And that's what the Hattricks have done this year. 44, seven and five in the regular season, three and one in the postseason, but facing their second straight elimination game. To Benedette, lost, won the draw from Kirkby. Yao has to get back and retreat for it. Radcliffe will pop it sky high. 
Settles right near, hand pass to himself by Marsha Son, dips his way free and smartly covered by Taylor Joseph as Marsha Son took Cam Yarwood crashing into the pipe. And Billy also said uh, key tonight is something that's out of his control, out of his team's control, and out of the Black Bears' control, but he put it on the referees. He said, hopefully we're allowed to play five-on-five -five hockey like we were Saturday night. There were only a few power plays in that game on Saturday night and the bulk of the game was played at five on five and it was exciting to watch, it was great hockey, but the officials basically took themselves out of the game and let the guys play and to their credit, both teams played themselves good, hard, clean game. And by the way, Danbury capitalized on the power plays. This is a chance in tight, they have scored. The net came off its moorings. Brian Wilson is gonna argue this one, but I think the goaltender, I think this goal is going to count. It's one nothing Binghamton. Three minutes and 14 seconds in. Justin Samaro, his first goal of the postseason, and he gets a big one off of a scramble rush to the net. And it looks like the referee is explaining it to Johnny Ruiz at center ice right now. I think he's gonna say that the net came off after the puck was poked in. Hard to tell right there. Uh, well, and, you, and you don't see a big, big argument coming from the hat tricks but just 314 into the game, a little adversity now for Danbury as they trail one nothing. For the fourth time in five postseason games, the Hattricks have surrendered the game's first goal as McKittrick gets on the turnover, trying to leave the pass, stick came flying out of somebody's hands. Here comes Anderson over the Rabbit logo at center eyes, threw it behind him. Black Bears are off sides. Abdella will get over to the puck and chip this one on towards the circle. The puck is covered by Joseph. And indeed, it is 1-0 Binghamton. It holds up, and Danbury looking to try and dig themselves out of the hole. Well, Binghamton goes, they split up their top line, they spread the wealth, and boom, they get rewarded immediately. They're off to a really good start, skating really well, and they get a broken play down low in front of the Danbury net, and they convert. Samaro is first of the playoffs, Gavin Yates with the assist, goal at 314, so the hat tricks on Saturday, never trailed. A lot of that game was tied, but they never trailed. Tonight they trail, and they trail early in a must-win game three. Yates, his sixth assist of the season, his seventh point of the postseason, I should say, as we have a two-on-two -two chance for Binghamton. Olivieri glides up shot, glove saved by Brian Wilson, and almost immediately after the goal went in, Wilson tested early. And Danbury has got to be able to start creating some offensive chances because Binghamton is getting into their offense too quickly. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When Binghamton's good, they use their speed and they get the heck out of their own end and get through the neutral zone. And that's where the hat tricks need to slow them down. Right now, a lot of juice on the Binghamton side. Danbury a little bit back on their heels. Pamelan will bring it around for his deep partner, Xavier Abdella. Pass ahead, kicks off Tobias Ojik. Grabs it at the red line, knocked down off the skate of Abdella. Needs the short pass, it goes to nobody. Colin Fitzgerald will ring this in off the end wall. Pamela Ann will come over and pick up the loose puck. Dips his way across the middle. Ojik gliding on, leaves it for Michael Falanga, skating as the extra forward again and earning a bunch of time in the last game on the top line. And Sheehan tried to create some space with a hit. This will find its way out to neutral ice. Pamela Ann to Abdella. They'll pitchfork this on, it's off the wall, and they'll swap the D out. Knocked down by Abdella. Yao. Throw it forward for Michael Marsha Son. Offsides are the hat tricks. They're gonna say Radcliffe didn't get back across the line in time, and Binghamton doing everything to this point right. Yeah, again, it's early in the game, but this is the start that Binghamton's gotta like. Not only getting the first goal, but they've had the better of the play in the offensive end. And they've looked really good against the Hattricks, denying the Hattricks entries, and Danbury's been offside a few times already. Puck low to the wall. Marcius on the check on Schultz. That's a big man that he knocked down to Benedette to lose Puck in front. Marcius on, wants it, second chance at it, and Joseph will cover it. Two in tight shots by Michael Marcius on, and both of them stopped by Taylor Joseph. Well, Michael Marchesan got the hat-tricks off and running in the second period in game two on Saturday. When he scored, he was held off the score sheet in game one, but he had a goal and an assist 
And he has nine points in the postseason, tied for the postseason lead in the FPHL. Five of those points are goals. He has been a dominant force for much of this regular season, and it has increased during the postseason as Yarwood is back on the puck. De Benedet waves at it. Riley Robertson, who had an assist in Saturday night's game, will settle this down. Pass for De Benedet. Who went behind him? It got tipped on his yeah. intended Good target. Good stick again by Binghamton. They're in the right passing lanes as they'll try and thread this through. Kirkby couldn't control it. Tyson Kirkby will work it around to the high point. Shot stopped by Wilson and shunted to the wall. Brett Parker has a shot blocked by Jared Yao. De Benedet the handoff for McKittrick over the middle. McDonald gliding up the wing. Fitzgerald doesn't have a stick. Let's see if the hat tricks can exploit that as McDonald goes down. Bunnell in on it. Four players there. And a lost stick doesn't end up hurting him. Two on two. Back come the Black Bears. Parker tries to receive the pass. Working on Dowler. Hard hit. And Dowler separates the puck. On comes Ruiz with McKittrick on his hip. Ruiz and McKittrick gliding on together. Drops the pass for McKittrick and does not connect. Atrix looking a little bit sloppy so far tonight on their passing attempt as Schultz will ring this off the wall. Wilson's out of his net. Schultz got hit away from the puck. Yeah, good hit thrown by Johnny Ruiz as he was heading off the ice. Captain on captain violence right there. <laughs> Pamela Leon will go back, look for it, turns over his head to see where the Black Bear is and he takes a good check from Mac Lewis. The officials. Well, it's a series deciding game, and they're going to let the fellas figure this out. Yeah, hey, and nobody's. No know, one's complaining. There's been nothing egregious going on here nope. as the puck goes into the. Here we go. And you get a Darwood fight. and Ojek going down. A correction. Boylard and Ojek going at it right against the wall, taken down. And the second we say anything about it, we're going to get. We're going to get five for fighting out of this. And we'll see if anybody's going to get an extra. Johnny Ruiz yep. hopped up, and he was screaming at the official right as the fight started. The official pointed, Looking. actually, he pointed at the Danbury bench and put up two fingers. We'll get you the full penalties after this quick pause here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. Well, TK's American Cafe on White Street in Danbury. You can stop by to TK, uh, stop by TK's to try one of their 76 amazing wings flavors. Check them out online at TK'sAmericanCafe.com. Jim Cerny, Chris Lynch with you here from Danbury Arena. Hattrick's Trail 1-0, 6.52 into the first period. But Chris, they are headed to the power play. The ruling is matching fighting majors, five for fighting against Tobias Ojik and Matthew Boylard, Gavin Yates is serving a two minute infraction. I'm not sure if that's no, on an he's, instigator. He's serving the instigator. He, yeah, he's serving the instigator penalty by Boylard. So the hat tricks, whose power play has been clicking in this postseason, and have gotten power play goals each of the last three games, will go to work down one nothing, looking to tie things up as Johnny Ruiz will dish it to his left for Pamela Leon, who will ring it around the wall. Joseph can't control it and skipped on the apron of the goal. Loose puck to Radcliffe at the point. Pamela Leon will look to put it on net, wanted the tip, bounces, and Marcia Son tried to control it. It'll come out and over the blue line. And the Hattrick's power play has come alive in the postseason. 38.5%, they lead at the FPHL in the postseason in power play, five for 13. Oh, here's a chance for Don Olivieri. Broke it up, winds up for the fake shot. Now takes it, and Wilson will put it in his mitt as we continue to get some pushing and shoving. Olivieri having to be separated. One extra shove to Zach Pamelan, and the official tells Olivieri to stop. Actually ran Olivieri accidentally into Pamelan himself. Boy, look at Olivieri. He's hot. Yeah, he is hot. Yeah, he's really hot. He's fired up. I thought he was a Binghamton Black Bear that really stood out in game two on Saturday. I thought he played really, really well. 
and a good play here. Shorthanded, one against two, gets a shot on net, then gets to the net so Wilson can't play the puck. So now the faceoff is on the Danbury, at the Danbury end of the rink, well, with them on the power play. So really good job by Oliveri. By the way, my least favorite thing that you just uh, saw there, the fake faceoff. The worst. I hate that. Please at, just drop the puck. At, at any level of hockey, I dislike that. Faceoff won by Sheehan. Second power play unit on the ice for Danbury. McDonald, Sheehan, Dowler, Benell, and DeBenedette. Benell sneaks in behind the defense. Benell wanted it across for DeBenedette, and it got tipped away. Binghamton has their sticks in the right spot to tip these. McDonald winds up. Benell stepping into some space. Shot save made. Big rebound bounces to the circle. Sheehan creates some space. Throws it across. Benell winds up. McDonald at the top. Looks for the redirect shot. Knocked down and cleared away by Parker with 35 seconds of power play time left to go. Danbury getting their looks but unable to finish them off. I like, that. I like Binghamton what they're doing. You mentioned their sticks. Even strength and power play. Their sticks and bodies have been in the right position. Belanga threw a check. Throws it around the dasher. Sheehan will keep this on. Sheehan and Dowler will work it to the opposite side. Needs somebody to fill that space. McDonald does that for a moment, but that's gonna kill off the remainder of this power play. It's a little bit behind Kirkby. Maybe one last chance on the rush. Falanga tried to get behind the outstretched stick of Justin Samaro, the goal scorer for the Black Bears. This will find its way into Danbury's defensive end. Abdella holds it. Sheehan dishes to Falanga. Falanga nearly has his pocket picked, runs to the red line, holds onto the puck well. It's got a lot of strength, but not a large man. Ruiz gets the loose puck. Ruiz, shot, stopped by Joseph. Ruiz went down hard, but no penalty called on that. That one never got through. That was Schultz, yeah. the captain who went in and ate rubber in front of his goalie. Good block by the captain as De Benedet, or sorry, McKittrick got over to it. Marsha Son tried to separate him from the puck. Loose, McKittrick's on it. Hands off for Marsha Son. Wides in, shot, score! Michael Marsha Son, goal number six of the playoffs, his 10th point, and Danbury has tied the game and sent the home crowd into a frenzy. Binghamton hasn't made many mistakes in this first period. They made a big one right there. A turnover just outside their own blue line. And then the Hattricks turned it back the other way and Michael Marchison accepted the pass, went in all alone on left wing and he is able to beat Joseph one on one. And he is now tied with Peter Panacek of, of uh, Carolina with six goals so far in the postseason, a huge goal for Marchison, and we're tied 1-1. Pamela will flip this over the middle. Marchison has been the most dynamic player for the Hattricks. Here's a chance for Binghamton, shot blocked to the wall. Andrew Logar, who drew into the top spot, skated as one of the extra forwards last night as Marchison will put it off the glass. Settled by Yarwood, and across to his left for Colin Fitzgerald. Under 10 minutes to go in the first. 1-1, one, one. they'll walk this in, looks for a play. Tried the wraparound, Wilson smartly will just put his glove on top of the puck and we'll take a breather, come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here. On Jared DiLorenzo is a proud member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Stop by and see them on North Street in downtown Danbury. Feeling good is an option and they can get you there. Halfway through the first period, we're all tied at one. 
Michael Marchison is sixth of the playoffs at 940, assisted by Gordy Bennell, who created the turnover and then fed Marchison on the left wing over the blue line. Gordy with the only assist. A big one there as a hat tricks force a turnover, a rare mistake by Binghamton in this first period, and the hat tricks make them pay. Bennell's second point, second assist of the of the postseason. Draw down, Binghamton wins it. Winds up, looks for the shot, save made by Wilson and no rebound. A little bit of extracurriculars after the whistle and the officials tell everybody to knock, up, knock it off. We'll see a replay of that goal right here. This is the turnover that they were able to create. Got to it, turned it, and a brilliant play by Marchison to finish it off and the hat tricks clearly loving it here yeah, at the Dan Bryce Arena. And you know what, Gordy didn't cause the turnover. That was my mistake but he hopped on the loose puck and made a neat feed to Marchesan. He was aware of where Marchesan was. It looked like McKittrick also may have had a hand yes. in interrupting and causing yes. some more mess as well. And as Binghamton in their own end will ring it around for Tyler Jurich. I believe this is the first time I'm saying his name tonight. Jurich, all-time leader in goal scoring in the FPHL, has been a wonderful, wonderful performer. Bad turnover. Off of Kuznetsov's stick, Jurich in front, sails it up top. The first time I've said his name and the most dangerous player on the ice for Binghamton just misses a shot a little too high as Danbury tries to collect himself. That's a bad turnover for Kuznetsov. Sheehan will just lob this in. Yates will settle it and regroup. Yates over the middle. Sheehan tries to knock it off his stick. McKittrick flies in, Bunnell as well, the puck is loose, McKittrick is on top of it, tried to put it on towards the slot, knocked down by Xavier Abdella, and worked to Gordy Bunnell, Ruiz waits for it against the wall, dips it, Bunnell, shot save made by Joseph, Ruiz lost it, tries to kick pass, gets it to McKittrick, Abdella winds up looking for a play to go with it, goes to the boards, behind the net for Ruiz, up top, Gordy couldn't get the shot away quickly, and a chance for a rush for Binghamton. Yates up the wall, swap spots with Kirkby, and McKittrick will get on the loose puck and fly it back out to Colin Fitzgerald at the center, where he's hit by Johnny Ruiz. What a great back check by McKittrick, and, and you've now called Johnny with two big hits in this first period. You know the captain's fired up. Danbury trying to get to the first ever Commissioner's Cup final series in franchise history. It'll be the first Danbury team to play for the Commissioner's Cup in the final series since the 2016 Danbury Titans as we are going to have penalties upcoming. Marchison tangled up with, that looks like Mac Lewis. The fighting Man. majors are done. Ojik and Boylard coming back to the ice. And they're going to be coincidental minors here, so that opens up the ice, which is good and it's dangerous, right? It, it, from a Danbury or a Binghamton point of view, you got the talent with a lot of open ice. You got a lot of opportunity there to generate offense, so it's cool offensively. But then you also got this other team that's really good offensively too, and they could take advantage of that. So it's a pretty dangerous situation here. You really need to be aware with all that open ice. There's gonna be a lot of skill out there on this four on four. And by the way, the Hattricks do lose some of that skill without Michael Marchison on the ice. So a bit of a loss for them as they'll be flown and that caught the I-beam they're gonna say that holds up the 200 seating section level. So five seconds off the four on four time. We'll do the face off in Danbury's defensive ice again. You know who's had a lot of jump tonight? Most in the playoffs so far is Gordy Bunnell. Yeah. He's, he's come to play. Bounces to Yates. Dowler tried to separate him from the puck to Benedette. Will get over and play it. Looks for the pass across the zone to McDonald. The diagonal connects. McDonald will just lob this in. Gives it round the dasher. Lopez, first guy to it. Lopez will look for an outlet. Pass to Yates. Yates to the red line. Yates glides in. Abdella tries to force the puck free. Yates, puck ran away from him. Good check by Xavier Abdella. Brandon Sheehan will dish it to McKittrick. McKittrick has been involved in a lot of plays. McKittrick will leave this in. Two assists so far through four playoff games for the Nunavut native as the puck will spring free for Xavier Abdella looking for the tip. That bounces to the end boards. Sheehan 
Holds up and looks for somewhere to go with it. Abdella winds up, looks for it in tight. That skips just a little bit wide of Taylor Joseph's crease. Sheehan holds it, holds it against the wall and just leaves it there until the trio of Black Bears force the puck free. You hear the car horns. You hear the noisemakers in the building. Puck goes across. Sheehan with a hard check to flatten Cam Yarwood. Anderson. Drops the pass behind him for Samaro. Up to the top shot, blocked, and fluttered a little bit wide to the left. Everybody laying out. Yeah, how about she in there selling his body out to block that shot? Bunch of tough people, these hockey players, as the puck a little bit too far behind Ruiz. Bunnell read the pass correctly. 20 seconds of four on four time left to go. Anderson will leave it behind him. Here comes Schultz. Schultz through a check. Schultz across the blue line. Schultz glides on. Shot saved by Wilson. And the big rebound is all for naught as Pamelayan collides with Anderson and shoves him into the net to blow play dead. You know, a year ago, of course, not quite at this time, not apples to apples date wise, but at the end of the first round of the playoffs, these two teams met in a decisive game three after the hat tricks had won. Uh, game two of the series here in dramatic fashion. And the Hattricks won that decisive game 5-3 to advance to the second round. The difference in that game from tonight already, Hattricks had a 3-0 lead in that game, and Binghamton wouldn't go away until the Hattricks finally iced it in the third period, winning 5-3. Here, it was Binghamton scoring first tonight, and we're 1-1 with 5.40 to play in the first. The four-on-four four time comes to a conclusion Marcia Son and Lewis out of the box. Kirkby backhand shot, got nothing on it. Robertson bear hugging him. That's a very large man. Puck goes to the top of the circle, nearly rolls on to Wilson, and they get it out over the line. That's a bit of a desperation clear. Black Bears are very off sides. They've got to reset as DeBenedet will carry this up. Throws it on net. Joseph, the free puck bounces. Ojik got to the rebound and shot it. Joseph made another save. That's not a very good play with a glove hand as that puck will find its way out with 5.05 left to go. That's not a good glove hand play for Joseph. No, absolutely not. That was a big rebound right out in the slot. And Ojik came flying in for a good second opportunity for Danbury. Puck bounced up and almost caught back of goalkeeper Frankie McClendon. Yeah, and Frankie talking about it with Riley McVeigh there. Two goalies chatting along the red line. Goalies are chatty. It's a different sort of fraternity within the family of hockey as Fitzgerald gains the line. Yao got checked back up to his feet. Yao with a retaliatory hit on Fitzgerald. Abdella around for Ojek. Puck is free. Looks for a play in front, handles it, circles, shot, got nothing on it, did Chad Lopez. Good defense, good stick there by DeBenedet. Ojik across the middle, Ojik tries to split a couple of defenders, and will take the puck all the way to the wall. Kuznetsov on the ice, Johnny Ruiz out as well. He's getting a lot of ice time. Here comes Yates. He'll take this puck up himself. Yates dandles his way free. Gonna get a penalty here against the Hat Tricks. Heading off to the, uh, to the bench and looking for a play in front as this will be knocked down. We'll take the under five media timeout. Tied at a goal apiece. Binghamton about to head to the power play here on the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. Comfortable stay with great amenities. The only choice is La Quinta by Wyndham right here in Danbury. That's for the hat tricks, friends and family rate. You can't beat it. La Quinta. I'm Jim Cerny. He is Chris Lynch. Hat tricks and Black Bear is tied at 1. 409 to go in period number one. Big opportunity here, though, late in the period for Binghamton. They will head to their first power play as Jared Yao goes off two minutes for high sticking. And it's a pretty obvious call. It's a good drive. 
by Gavin Yates. Both these teams have been effective on the power play at different points in the season. Binghamton did get themselves a couple of power play goals throughout the course of the series. One on Saturday and two, I believe, on yeah, Friday. Two yes. Friday, one Saturday. And actually, that was a pretty good bit of work considering there were two major power plays. As Olivieri will wind this up at the point, it's a deliberate power play across Wanning Anderson. Danbury led the league in shorthanded goals during the regular season, have not gotten one yet during these playoffs. Anderson to the slot, Lopez turns, fires, loose puck, and Wilson will cover it. Abdella getting into it, and the officials gonna get in the middle of the melee. Abdella having yeah, words I mean, yeah, with Samaro. Yeah, and, and that's, they're not really getting into it. That is just a defenseman clearing out the crease in front of his goalie, who, by the way, made a very good save through yes. traffic there. A sneaky, good left-wing shot by Lopez. And then Abdella took his man out to make sure that there was no rebound. I've got to tell you, he's another guy. You talk about unsung heroes. Xavier Abdella had himself yeah. a heck of a game on Saturday. And already he's had himself a very good game, getting involved in a lot of good clears, some good checks. I've really liked how Xavier Abdella has played as Olivieri will get to it across to the dot shot. Kick save made, cleared up, not out. Marchesson does put some additional effort into it and clears it to neutralize Michael Marchesson, the lone goal, and he's having himself quite the night with the defensive checking as well. Uh, he's, he's, he's done it all, really, since the Hattricks acquired him after he was let go from Binghamton or by Binghamton earlier in the season. Yates across for Olivier, he can't connect to Benedette, will clear it the length of the ice. Atrix have killed off one minute of the two minute minor penalty. Olivier will take this for a walk. Glides it, drops the pass behind him. McKittrick tried to work it off, Yates couldn't do so. Kirkby going to the net, Yates looking for the redirect, got on Wilson who makes the stop. Sheehan upends his man and clears it the length of the ice. Joseph out of his net. He'll leave it behind him for Olivieri, who is the quarterback on the power play. Drops it for Yates. McKittrick spinning, keeps his balance. Across the blue line, works it. Wanted to redirect, poked out by Abdella. Still gathered up. Yarwood to Jurich, couldn't play it cleanly. Yarwood steps into it, head fake, circle shot, shoulder save by Wilson, and flipped out just over the blue line. Yarwood gloves it off for Jurich. Across, Abdella steps in to try and separate Kirkby from the puck, takes him down. Lewis there to help him. Sheehan will clear it, and Jared Yao right out of the box. This is not going to be icing it. No, it will be. Uh, it was cleared right as the penalty expired. So a mistake there by Jared Yao. He came out of the box, and he was ahead of the field. He would have beaten everybody to that puck, but he thought that there wasn't gonna be an icing, that maybe the puck was sent out before he came out of the box. And so he was heading to the bench to get a you know a forward on there, a third forward. And just a mistake by Yao there, a misread, because he would have beaten everybody down the ice to the puck and there wouldn't have been an icing. So now you get a face off with 204 to play here in the first to the left of Brian Wilson. One goal apiece. Binghamton got theirs pretty early on. Danbury got theirs close to midway through. Dowler separates Samara from the puck. Sheehan jostling with a pair of Black Bears. Dowler in to help him out. Wilson has to cover it. The puck came right onto his crease. And Wilson smartly just puts his glove on it and covers it as the officials having to do a lot of interventions here in the first period. And what's been uh, mostly under control, oh, but yeah. still still kind of chippy and kind of almost like it's a playoff game or something. Oh, you think so? Yeah, well, <laughs> somebody's going home after tonight, and yes. you know that there's nobody on either side that wants to be going home. How it, about that pinball right there? Pin, the puck sent out in front, goes off the skate, and then pinballs off both Wilson's pads before he fell on the puck, and here another good save by Brian Wilson. Binghamton's having a really, really good face-off game as Ruiz tries to work this puck free. They won't. Parker will swoop it behind the net, try the wraparound. Dowler can't control it, turning and firing. That shot is blocked. Where's the puck? It's still in the defensive end for the Hattricks. Bunnell will get it out, and the whistle sounds. 
for something away from the play, I believe, as we have a glove sitting at center ice. Falanga getting tied up with Josh Newberg, who's the extra skater for tonight. They're signaling a cross check. And who is this going against? Yeah, no, no door is open. I think it's gonna be against Danbury. Yeah, they're now opening the Danbury door. And yeah, or Johnny Ruiz is trying to get an explanation and Michael Falanga is gonna head to the box. Two minute cross checking penalty with a minute and 21 seconds left to go. It's the second power play opportunity for the Black Bears. Danbury killed off. Oh, wait a minute. We're getting a matching as well, it looks like. Newberg is going to head off as well. The two extras will be sitting. I don't think we're going to get a power play out of this. I think we're just going to get matching two-minute minors. And, yep, two more minutes of four-on-four four hockey. Interesting. Or, wait a minute. Yep. I'm looking to see, because we have five Binghamton players. Oh, Dowler's big. heading off now. Well, I don't know if Dowler... Okay, so we are getting a power play here. Offsetting minors against Falanga and Newberg, and then a minor against Dowler. As De unless, Benedet unless it was two minors against Falanga and Dowler serving. I mean, we don't know yet. We'll yeah. wait on the penalties. Bottom line is, that's a big second opportunity coming up here for Binghamton. A minute and 20 left to go. A good faceoff win by Lucas De Benedet. Abdella comfortable just keeping the puck pinched to the wall. Olivieri spins to Benedette almost into the neutral zone. Looks for it across the circle. Schultz winds up shot. Blocked by Marchesson. Got it on his skate and poked it over the line. Olivieri, the Philadelphia native, will hold it and look for Anderson as we come to the last minute of the opening stanza. Puck to Schultz. Low for Lopez. Holds up Robertson. The check. Anderson. Oh, Robertson's hurt. Robertson's down. He'll get back into the play. The shot is high. Robertson hoping to be able to hop off. And the whistle sounds. Robertson having a word with the officials. And the Danbury fans give a smattering of boos. I think they're really booing the collection of calls that are being announced right now. <laughs> that too, yeah. I, I did not see what happened behind the net, behind the play to Robertson, but boy, he was in some distress. He's off the ice now. This is the hit. Robertson got upended after he laid the initial check as McKittrick will come over and play at the penalties, by the way, as we'll play this across and look for somewhere to go with it. Up to the circle, Olivieri, off to Anderson. High sticking call against Yao, wait a minute. Oh, that's an yeah. older penalty. Yeah, they, they haven't uh, sent the penalties here. I'm just receiving the word on the older penalties that we had earlier. McKittrick trying to separate it. 14 seconds left to go. Anderson at the circle. Top of the line, Olivieri winds up for the blast. Kicks it wide. It's on the apron of the goal. Lopez will work it. Turns it. Looks for the last second shot. Won't get it through. Yao blocked it, and that will send us to the first intermission tied up at one goal apiece. And Yao hurting a bit, Robertson hurting a bit, everybody laying themselves out for the cause, and get we are getting good hockey as a result. Yeah, absolutely. Billy McCreary looks like he's trying to get some kind of explanation on why there was not a penalty when Robertson got hit from behind and ended up in that distress that we were talking about and how about that block shot in the final seconds by Jerry Dow? Both teams selling out in front of their goalies. And this is what you expect. Just the intensity and the passion from two very, very good hockey teams with their seasons on the line tonight. After 20 minutes, we're tied at one. 18 minutes for the intermission up on the board. One goal apiece. Binghamton getting the scoring started Early on into the game, Justin Samara, the new Ipswich, New Hampshire native, finishing off a play set up by Gavin Yates. Michael Marchesson capitalizing on a turnover by Binghamton to get one back. We're even at one goal apiece. Shots are 10-7 in favor of the visitors. But still, it's not as if Danbury didn't get their chances or didn't get their looks. Yeah, you know, I, it, it, it's interesting, the ebb and flow, right, of, you know, how a period moves along 
I thought Binghamton really came out and was the better team in, in the first, I'd say, five, six, seven minutes. And not just because they scored the first goal, though they deserved the first goal because yes. they were the better team in the early going. But then I thought Danbury found its footing. They had a couple good opportunities. And then, of course, took advantage of a rare mistake by Binghamton in the first period. They made them pay. Marcia Sun scored the goal, tied it up. And I thought from that point forward, things kind of tightened up. There were a couple chances each way, but really you couldn't say, boy, they were better than they were. Or, you know, the, the hat tricks were better, the Black Bears were better. It was pretty much even that second half of the first period. And this is kind of what I expected, a good, tight-checking hockey game with good goaltending and mistakes are going to are going to be the difference. Maybe special teams will be a difference, but it's probably going to come down to who makes the big mistake and who capitalizes on it. Again, the winner goes on to the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. The Carolina Thunderbirds beat the Columbus River Dragons 4 to 3 with an excellent comeback effort by Columbus falling just slightly short. They Tie, they got that game to 4-3 with about a minute and 10 left and just couldn't get over the hump to finish it off. So Carolina, the first team to punch their ticket to the final dance. If the Hattricks win, then we go to Winston-Salem to start up the postseason, the final run of the postseason there. If Binghamton wins, then we're starting in the Valley of Opportunity for the finals between the Black Bears and Thunderbirds. Now, we'll, we'll talk more about that series uh, when, when we return and when we have our second period underway here, but we'll talk a little bit more about Carolina Columbus because that was one heck of a series. A few other intermission notes, quick pause back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena.
Back here at Danbury Ice Arena, I'm Jim Cerny. Hat Tricks and Black Bears tied at one as we're in the first intermission, game three of the second round of the postseason. And our Chris Lynch had a chance to catch up with tonight's goal scorer for the Hat Tricks, Michael Marchesson. First intermission, tied at one goal apiece. I'm here with Michael Marchesson, who got the first goal for the Danbury Hat Tricks. And well, let's talk about that goal and how that play developed and what you saw as it unfolded. Uh, I just hopped off the bench and uh, they were in a change and we turned pucks over very nicely the last game too and I think we did a good job of that, that first period transition. We hopped on it, Tricky gave me a good pass and just put it in. And talk about that penalty kill that you've had as well because that's two times so far that you've killed off an uncompleted second penalty kill to this point but still you've been able to kill off. You had a particularly good one where you were diving and stretching out to try and Try and make the additional play as well. Yeah, you got to do that in playoffs. You got to lay your put your body on the line. Like I'd sacrifice anything for these boys. I'm sure they do the exact same thing. So we're a family like that. We're gonna stick like that. What's the mood of the team going into the second period? Hungry. I want to be better. Got to be better than that. But we're gonna do it. Second period on the way. Marsha on. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. And that is Chris Lynch with Michael Marchison. Marchison scored at 9:40 of that first period and brought the hat tricks even at one apiece in this one. I have a couple scoring changes. The first goal was Samero for Binghamton at 314. Yates got the primary assist, but a secondary assist has been added to Colin Fitzgerald. And at 940, Marcius on his sixth of the postseason. Gordy Bennell originally was given the lone assist. He keeps his assist, but Daniel McKittrick has now been uh, given a secondary assist there and is Chris rejoins me here in the booth. Chris, you, you you were right on it when you said McKittrick is the one who hounded the Black Bear forward at center ice and caused the turnover. And indeed, that's the way it was seen when the video was reviewed and he was given a secondary assist. Well-earned, huge play by McKittrick, great look by Bennell, and an even better fish, finish by Marchison. And that's where we are, 1-1 one, one after 1. And a needed performance from somebody who's just been kind of quiet throughout the course of the postseason compared to what he's been during the course of the regular season. A 56-point performer for the Hat Tricks, split between the Hat Tricks and Mississippi Seawolves. Two assists coming into this game in four previous postseason games. Gets his third of the postseason, and you need him to chip in a couple of points. You need him to help with lifting this offense up a well, bit more. It, it's, yeah, it's not even chipping in with a couple points. This is one of your top offensive players, yep. right? And he has been ever since he, he came here from Mississippi. So there are expectations. And, you know, McKittrick's had a slow go of it so far in the postseason. But there he picks up a big assist. And how does he pick up that assist? Not with anything fancy. No, it's about getting down and dirty, causing a tur turnover, making a good defensive play, and turning defense into offense. That's what good players do, Chris. And also, it's worth noting again, I have to keep harping on Binghamton had Michael Marchison let him go, and Marchison has six goals in the postseason. Yeah, and at 30, three points in this series. Yeah, and had 34 point, uh, 34 goals in the regular season, you know, for the hat tricks. You know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes it's just not a fit. And in the case of Marchison, you know, may have been opportunity as well. You know, there are a lot of good veteran players on that Binghamton team, and he got released, but there there was an opening here in Danbury at that time. So it was it could just be timing, it could just be fit. No matter what, you can't can't argue to the success of Michael Marchison since he's come here to the Danbury Hatricks. He has had himself one heck of a regular season, and he is in the midst of one heck of a postseason. Binghamton has come back onto the ice. Danbury returning. You see some of the Black Bear fans who made the trip out here from the Valley of Opportunity. Called so because point in the Great Depression, it was actually a hub of an awful lot of commerce and great work opportunities. I think IBM was founded not that far away from Binghamton, New York. And Lockheed Martin has an office out there as well. I got the opportunity to go out there and call the game in Binghamton. Jim, you've been out there in that building many times doing AHL games. That building is a good, high-quality professional hockey building, and they have a long-time and very loyal fan base in Binghamton. Yeah, a great fan base in Binghamton. And 
and all the power to them. They, they were here in game two. They showed up in droves here on Saturday night in Danbury. And tonight, you know, not as many fans. It's a Monday night. It's a school night. Still, it's a great vibe. Really good crowd tonight. Just a few fewer Binghamton Black Bear fans tonight in attendance. A little tougher to do it on a weeknight. Well, the people who are into it are just as lively as the puck will find its way down. It's dropped. We're underway. 30 seconds left of power play time for Binghamton to try and reclaim their lead. Winds up shot save made by Wilson. It's a great drive by Don Olivieri. Just glided right on in. And Wilson allowing zero rebounds. It's exactly what you want to do. Just don't give any chances for a bounce in puck. What you didn't like there is that the hat tricks just backed up, backed up, backed up, and Oliveri took advantage of the opportunity and got a good scoring chance. To the slot turning, Lopez shot is blocked by Yao and knocked straight upstairs. That's also a bit on the dangerous side if Lopez is getting shots. It was blocked, but still, Lopez is getting to the spot that he wants to get to. Absolutely, and uh, just clearing up some things I knew we didn't know the penalty situation at the end of the period. The extra penalty was Dowler for cross-checking, and the coincidental minors were to Falanga and Newberg. Both for unsportsmanlike conduct. They're actually four-minute penalties. Yes. So they'll be sitting out for a good long while, so things are going to be fresh when they get out. Winds up for the blast. That's just why. That's a cannon shot by Oliveri. Bounced out by Johnny Ruiz. He'll try and take the puck away underneath. Gordy Bennell's stick at the right idea just couldn't quite connect. It's a good penalty kill ultimately with a couple of dangerous chances. Patrick's two for two on the kill tonight. Robertson shielding against Lopez across for his D partner McDonald looking for the long outlet. This is icing. That wasn't a very good decision by Johnny McDonald. It wasn't, but what a smart veteran uh, play there by Yarwood who is a yeah. veteran because he, the puck was coming right to him, or at least to his stick area. So what does he do, Chris? He lifts his stick up and he lets the puck zip on by, and that ends up being an icing where he could have easily just picked off the pass. Now they get the face off to the right of Brian Wilson. Smart play by Cam Yarwood. 102 into the second period, tied up at one goal apiece. It's been as even and as tightly contested as you would hope. McKittrick blocks the shot and slaloms through the neutral zone. Tries to get through Fitzgerald. Puck is contested. Fitzgerald will go back and get it. Fitzgerald holding, looking for the pass along the wall. Over Sheehan Stick through Jared Yao. Now with it, Kuznetsov dips it, drops it. Poor decision. Kuznetsov will wave his stick at the play. Puck bounces onto the crease and covered up by Brian Wilson. A couple of real sloppy mistakes, and so far, Brian Wilson is keeping this game tied. Yeah, and, and again, it didn't lead to a great scoring opportunity for Binghamton, but it sure could have. Yeah. Right? You know, because that's how it's got to be a little, uh, a little bit more uh, firm in making his decision there. It's like he got caught in between. Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? Uh, and then the puck slipped off his stick. Contested faceoff. Oja oh, flies it, it a, out. Oh. But did it hit his stick? It did not. It just flew straight out. Yeah, that's going to be a delay of game penalty, and Binghamton will get their third consecutive power play. That's a mistake. Tobias Ojik is going to be serving the two-minute infraction. He just flew it clean out, and that's not a penalty in which there is any opportunity for distinction or exception. You have to call it as such. And Danbury, two for two on the penalty kill so far. You gotta be careful with all these penalties that Binghamton is getting as Yarwood will play it to the circle. Kirkby into the slot, turning. Yates couldn't do any more with it. Fell down before the stick got it away. And this is gonna be blown dead for oh, a no. high stick. I yeah. thought it was gonna be for a hand pass. Yeah, I thought it was well. a high, yeah, I thought it was a hand pass. That puck was bouncing all over the place there. Yarwood was coming over to have a chat with the officials and what's happening here? Are we lining up for a play in face off in neutral? Oh, you know what? It's a it's Gavin Yates is heading off for a high sticking penalty and Binghamton has just lost their power play. Yeah, you and I thought that the official was signaling that the puck was hit with a high stick. No. But instead, it's a high sticking penalty and boy, there's a break for Danbury 
and you know, no argument from the Binghamton side. So something that in the mix there, you and I did not see, but the officials caught it. So we're back to four on four. Okay, a minute and 45 worth of even skating each team down a man. Ojek sitting in the box for Danbury. Yates sitting for Binghamton. Yates is a pretty sizable loss. He'd be very valuable at four on four. Yarwood will pull up, look for some room to work with. Drops it along the wall. Jurich trying for the wraparound shot. Save me by Wilson. It kicks almost fully to the point. Fitzgerald will leave it low around the dasher. Kirkby got picked off and separated from it by Xavier Abdella. Puck doesn't have the steam to turn into one icing. So Taylor Joseph will just hand it off for Colin Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald dips around Ruiz. Glides over the red line. Gets to the circle. Drops the pass to Kirkby. Lost it. Abdella pokes this out. And once more, it's on net. Savvy play by Xavier Abdella for those sorts of clearings. Don't turn into an icing chance. McDonald will work it free and ring it in. Ruiz the first guy there for it. So again, no icing, but Danbury still not getting any offensive zone time. They're going to get a very truncated power play for only 15 seconds. Or 30 away from that happening as the puck will flutter in. Brendan Dowler goes and retrieves this. Dowler cuts it to the middle. Pass up to McDonald. Looking for some room. McDonald drops the pass. McKittrick the shot. Sails it a little too high over the crossbar. Lopez the other way. Puck ran too far away from him. Dowler for Radcliffe. Fumbling with the puck. He'll dip it for McDonald who will just leave it in. And he's hopping off for a line change. Schultz will look for it. Schultz will hold it. Throw it up the wing. Ojek's penalty is done. Dowler sprints back. And Danbury isn't really going to get much of a chance to do anything with this power play. Five seconds left to go on it. So each team will gain something on the penalty kill as Sheehan throws on the Jets. Sheehan runs out of room. Sheehan work free. Kuznetsov. Puck got underneath him. Yates. Big hit by Tobias Ojek. Shoulder to shoulder. Sommers across, Abdella pokes it free. Gonzalez off for Sheehan. Sheehan over the middle, Ojek running with them. Sheehan, nifty stick handling, threw it in tight and diving to break that up was Gavin Yates. Both sides laying out everything. Back comes Lopez, tumbles down, looking for somewhere to go with it. And Binghamton just runs out of real estate. Justin Samaro can't go anywhere with it. Dipped out for Ojek. Across the red line, drops the pass for Kuznetsov running on and ran out of real estate. Kirkby, drop pass for Yates. Yates over the middle, poked free by Lucas de Benedet. Radcliffe on the ice, cross soon, pass. Yao overran it and off sides are the hat tricks. Just a little bit out of sync, right? Don't you get that feeling? Yeah. That just a little bit out of sync and that, you know, Right now the hat tricks are in a 1-1 game. They're in their home arena, but just a little bit out of sync. Still you know, looking to find their mojo here in their best game. And part of that is Binghamton's done such a good job, you know, especially through the neutral zone. But yeah, Danbury's still trying to find their best game. And I was just thinking here is, you know, we're about five minutes into the second period. Taylor Joseph has not had to do a lot in goal for Binghamton just yet. Meanwhile, Brian Wilson, has had to do a fair bit at his end. Radcliffe tries to knock this down. Radcliffe, Marcia Son gliding in. Marcia Son for De Benedet. De Benedet in tight. Puck loose in the crease, and Binghamton will come away with it. Flown over the middle. Robertson sprinting back for it. It's just barely wide of Wilson for the icing. That takes us to the under 15. Media timeout tied at one apiece. We'll take a breather here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel.
Texas Roadhouse is located on Newtown Road here in Danbury. It opened its doors locally in 2017 and is owned for hand-cut steaks, cactus blossom, fall off the bone ribs made from scratch sides, and fresh baked bread. The restaurant prides itself on its legendary food, legendary service, and legendary fun. That is Texas Roadhouse right here in Danbury. Five minutes and 10 seconds gone by. It's an offensive zone face-off for the hat tricks. The Ruiz line on the ice. Kirkby opposes Ruiz on the face-off dot. The official doesn't drop the puck. He tells Yates to back up a little bit and get onto the right side of his line. And Kirkby will win the draw behind his net. Wrong through by Schultz. Abdella tries to break up the play and did for a second. Schultz gets to the corner. Looks for the outlet. Too far ahead for Yates. Bunnell spinning like a top. Picked off by Ruiz. Tries to dance through some traffic up to the point for Yao. Yao shot blocked down. Moose, where is it? McKittrick turned, tried to shoot it and couldn't play it cleanly. Puck to the wall. Abdella couldn't get it through Oliveri. Skied, somehow misses all of the speakers that hang at center ice here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Yao blows a tire. Yates with the puck to the circle. Wilson the save, the puck free. Bounce pass for Ojik. Runs all the way onto Taylor Joseph's net. Yarwood out with Ojik. The hat trick leading the break, trying to get to that running away puck. And cross and knocked down. By the way, Falanga's four minute matching minor with Josh Newberg is completed. So those two back to the benches. Falanga to the ice. Kirkby will just leave this in. Robertson can't clear it. Lewis runs into the glass, lost his stick. Falanga tries to pitch this out. They'll get it up. Falanga sprinting in. Ojik goes down. We're going to have a power play as Falanga is having a word with Yarwood. Ojik went down. What do we have here? So let's The puck see. came up and hit, or the stick came up and hit Tobias Ojik. But the official was pointing at Ojik to head to the box. What do we have here? This is the play that is being deliberated about. The stick came up and he caught Ojik cleanly in the face. Tobias Ojik, furious. I'm not sure. They're calling this a penalty on Tobias Ojik. Somehow. And Billy Billy McCreary trying to get an explanation. That's ludicrous, at least from the perspective of Billy McCreary. Ojik went down as well. Let's see this whole thing. It starts here. So yep, stick came up and caught Ojik. I have no clue how you could possibly call anything on Tobias Ojik on that. Maybe uh, an embellishment's the only thing I can think of, unless there, the if, stick came across. If there's an emb embellishment, there means there has to be like another penalty on the other side. That would even up, right? That would. And, this... and Tobias Ojik is bleeding. I yeah. Mean, we see him right now. He is bleeding from the mouth. And the trainer is going from the hat tricks, from the hat tricks bench to the penalty box. Look at the blood coming out of Tobias Ojik's mouth. That was a high stick. That's a ludicrous missed call. And now, as a result of the officials Johnny, just not calling a high stick, the hat tricks are wrongfully. This now, puck came up and caught. This stick came up and caught Tobias Ojik in the face. This was not called as a so high stick. I believe. What's the ruling on that? I, I believe the official might be saying that there was a high stick on Ojik. So Ojik lifted, lifted up and stick. caused his own thing. Yes. I, again, that's just a guess because we haven't gotten the official penalty call yet. We'll wait and see what that ends up being. But as it is, the hat tricks for the fourth time are going to the penalty kill. The shot stopped by Wilson. 14 seconds gone by on the man advantage. Puck rolls up to the wall. Schultz looks for it, drops to the goal line, looks for it up top. Oliveri will step into some space. Danbury perfect on the penalty kill so far. Looks for it in front. Puck sits against the stick of Lopez. Swaps spots. Anderson off for Schultz, receives it again at the point, winds up, looks for the play. Circle shot, save made. Puck takes a fortunate bounce for the hat tricks, and McDonald will get the clear. Tobias Ojik being attended to by the head athletic trainer of the hat tricks, Amy Schneider. 
Schultz. And, and you were right. The penalty call was two minutes for embellishment. It was an embellishment call, and yet there was... It's hard to embellish when there's blood pouring out of your face. I mean, unless they're saying he caused... He did something to cut himself. I, I don't understand. That's a good play here by DeBenedet. And the hat trick's clear. They still have 40 seconds to go on the kill. DeBenedet tried to get this up. 38 seconds of penalty time left to go. The hat tricks have killed off most of it. This would be a big point in the game if Danbury is able to survive this. 25 seconds left to go. DeBenedet pinching, tries for the clear, kept in by Yates, drags through, Jurich drags, turns, and Wilson puts it in his mitt to keep it tied at one apiece, and we get some extracurriculars after the whistle. What a save by Brian Wilson. Patrick's couldn't clear the puck. They were looking tired in their own end, and I believe that was Jurich that came, yeah. came away with the puck straight away, zipped one, tried to go top corner, and Brian Wilson flashed the glove there. That might be Brian's best save to this point, and certainly the most timely. 11.52 of time left to go in the second period. 17 seconds left on the Ojik. It was called by the officials embellishment penalty. Sheehan will get to the puck. Brendan Sheehan will lug this out. Headway for Falanga, pulls up, looks for Sheehan in tight. Save made by Taylor Joseph, a great shorthanded chance for the hat tricks. Falanga tries to jar the puck free, worked back on by Yao. Ojik's out of the box and will jump back on. Danbury survives their fourth penalty kill and this one will draw the most conversation of any that have taken place previously. McDonald, or no, sorry, Abdella tries to knock it down. Can't get the clear. Jurich, low, across. Saved by Wilson! How did he make that stop? The play is called dead. As we get a tie up, the officials, the, the net off came the off its moorings. Wilson makes the biggest save of the game. Wow! So I'd like to see if we have a replay on that. That might have hit pipe but I'm not 100% sure. That might have. I, 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 because part of it is, I can't imagine how Brian was able to get uh, any part of his body on that shot. An incredible, incredible save. Oh. Here's that sequence. The glide in, Wilson got across. Can't even it cuts the right across the camera. You're right. It, it does catch some of the yep. pipe. I think it catches Wilson's shoulder and then goes into the pipe. An incredible play to keep this game tied at one apiece. Huge saves at both ends of the ice. First, it's Taylor Joseph with the shorthanded save and then Wilson at the other end. Here comes Ojik. Ojik in. Ojik shot. Save made. Puck is loose in the crease. Where is it? It's still free. And the net has come off its mornings. Joseph is down on his front. Falanga and Ojek both crashing the net and now making Taylor Joseph do some real manual labor of making saves at his end of the rink. You can tell Tobias Ojek is absolutely fired up since coming out of the penalty box. That is the best skating we've seen out of Ojek in this series, right in that sequence. And he took it right to the net. He wasn't thinking about passing it. He took it right to the net, got the rebound, Falanga went, went for the puck, headed to the crease, whacked away at the rebound, but Joseph was able to keep it out. Ruiz the clean faceoff, when Dowler the shot, save made by Joseph. Bunnell gets to the loose puck, goes low to the corner for McKittrick, tries to create some space for himself. All three of the forwards on it, knocked down by Dowler, kicks it between his skate blades. Still working at it, Dowler with a good shift here. Puck will work its way out to McDonald. Steps into it, turns, fires, save made off the blocker of Taylor Joseph. Bunnell turns, leaves it for Ruiz on the apron of the goal. Tries to flip it in front. Ruiz the backhander, and the puck just goes wide to the right of Taylor Joseph. Knocked down by Ruiz, offsides. The puck just barely found its way out. And a little bit of a follow-up check after the whistle sounds with 10.22 left to go. You can feel the intensity starting to crank up here in the Danbury Ice Arena. Yeah, and, and the hat trick seemed to have had a little extra juice since that penalty call, that strange penalty call against Tobias Ojik. 
And what a great individual effort by the captain, Johnny Ruiz there, making something out of nothing with a great scoring opportunity coming out from behind the net. Rung around the wall, Fitzgerald. Can't control it, Marchessault's on it. Plays it to Yao. Looks for the pass low for Lucas De Benedette. Whacked back up to Jared Yao, looking for some place to go with it. De Benedette with the takeaway. Throws it to the top of the line, kept and settled by Yao. Dips around Yates. Yao steps in, shot. Weekly trickles on net and covered. We get some extracurriculars. Fitzgerald and Yao shoving. Yates getting into it as well, and the officials will separate everybody. Yates with a little more <laughs> to say, but that'll take us to the under 10. Tied at one goal apiece. 9.56 to go here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Beachwear of Bethel is located on Greenwood Avenue in Bethel. Beachwear is your place to go for a quality treat. Yogurt and toppings, it doesn't get much better. Catch a wave, that's a peach one at Bethel. 1-1, Hattricks and Black Bears midway through period number two here in the decisive game three. It's a clean faceoff win by DeBenedette. Puck worked low to the corner boards. Marcia Son shields the puck, works it low. DeBenedette blows a tire, almost completely does. Radcliffe stapled into the wall to Benedette, drops the pass for Abdella, leaves it low for Marcius and tries to throw it in front. Couldn't connect with Radcliffe. A lot of wrestling in the middle of this here hockey game. Yates the pass forward, Yao with the good stick on the clear. Here come the hat tricks. Radcliffe with to Benedette trailing. Radcliffe shot blocked. Weakly trickles to the end boards. Radcliffe couldn't play it neatly off his backhand. Off for to Benedette. Tried to work it through. Ojik glides in. Tobias Ojik spins, looks, turns, fires, save made, and a big rebound off of Taylor Joseph's glove. Lobbed out to center ice. Yao controls it, fights the puck a little bit, still shields it. Yao the pass off to the right side for Kuznetsov. Yao got clocked away from the puck. Sheehan stays on. Hands off for Kuznetsov, receives it, turns, fires. The shot is a little bit wide. Robertson will backhand it around the wall. Hamalayan. He'll turn and take the crunch. Schultz holds it. There's been no penalty called on the hit against Jared Yao. Pamelayan will settle and walk it through. Shot blocked across for Riley Robertson. He'll work it low for Tobias Ojik. Holds on, drops it. Sheehan looking to create some space. Kuznetsov sets the screen. Sheehan dangles. Puck is still in Ojik's stick. No penalty called out of all of this. Robertson and Ojik looking to keep this puck here. Up top, Sheehan steps into a shot off the, oh, almost kicked on off of Tyson Kirkby's stick. This will be flown over the middle. Robertson will settle it. 8.05 to go. Hattricks being able to keep this puck at this end. Off to Jurich at the opposite blue line. Tyler Jurich glides in. Pamela on with a good couple of pokes to jar the puck free. Puck forward for Daniel McKittrick. Glides on, McKittrick drops it. Bunnell, oh, lost the handle a little too fancy on the puck running too far away from him. Knocked in, Bunnell and Ruiz trying to keep it in. McKittrick will get over to the loose puck and ring it deep for the captain. Taylor Joseph out of his net, fumbles the puck. It's loose and no hat trick is there to get on top of it with a glorious chance. Fitzgerald will leave it in. 7.27 left to go. We're even at a goal apiece. McDonald off the boards and up to the red line. There is a lot of action here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Parker nearly blows a tire. That shot kicks a little bit dangerously, and Brian Wilson smartly will cover that, and we get a moment to breathe. This is a hit on Yao, got rid of it. Oh. This was not called a penalty. So I, I don't know that we're gonna get a chance to see it again there. That, that's my first clean look at it. Live, I only saw it out of the, you know, the corner yeah. of my eye. It looks like there, 
that could have been a knee to knee. That right? could have. That's why I'd like to see it again. Yeah. Yao was spun around like a top, and he was slow to get off. He crawled off the ice, and we have not seen him back on the ice since. 7.05 left to go. Jurich will play this up to the point. Turn shot. Knocked down. Marsha on. I think Wilson got a bit lucky. I don't think he saw that. Radcliffe. Glides in to Benedette to the corner. Turns, tries to play it in front, up to the point. Robertson the shot, knuckles it on. Marchison tries to get it through some traffic. Radcliffe turns, can't get a shot cleanly away. Binghamton packing in the middle of the ice, and Danbury has been unable to get a number of clean chances as this is an icing call against Binghamton. Yeah, so you're, you're spot on. Boy, are, are they good at packing it in tonight, right? And they have not been caught except on the goal they have not been caught on odd man rushes. But as good as they've been doing that, what a mistake that was. That not, I mean, inches away from the red line, they don't cross the red line, and they shoot it all the way down the ice. I mean, that is a poor, poor decision. When they were right by the red line, they could have easily avoided that icing call. Sheehan will take the face off against Anderson. They tell Brett Parker to back up. Church stepping into it. It's a pretty clean win for Anderson. Puck to the corner, and we get a whistle. So it hit his stick. Ah, it it, it went out. up over the glass, and then, gotcha. then came out. Okay, so and that'll be. Good news is that Jared Yao is back on the ice. That's good to see. So hopefully none the worse for wear. Probably just a little bit on the, my body is going to be sore tomorrow side yeah. of things. And again, it, it was hard to tell on the replay. It could have been just an absolutely terrific check, or it could have been closer to knee on knee. We really can't tell. Ojik behind the net. Ojik, Abdella on, loose puck, good save by Taylor Joseph. Falanga gets knocked down, can't get the clear. Ojik shields with it. Abdella tries to knock it down. Tobias Ojik. Couldn't knock it free. Ojik will take it. Muscles through some black bears. Ojik tries to create some space. Palanga lets the puck settle. Palanga creates some space. Shot blocked. Yates got in the way of it. Sheehan accidentally caught Yao up a little bit high. Palanga turns. Looks to play to the point. Sheehan the shot. Off the pipe. How did that not go in? How did that not go in? Abdella to, off the crossbar. A glorious chance that just Barely stayed out. Abdella catches it. Plays it for Bunnell. Bunnell will leave it for Falanga. Taylor Joseph is ludicrously lucky. Ruiz tries to play it on for Falanga. McDonald at the point. Turn shot. Blocked down. That's the best chance the hat tricks have had through the course of the game. Sheehan just absolutely cranking up a one-timer there from inside the blue line. I got to tell you. By my angle, it looked like it was up underneath the crossbar and out. It looked like it could have been, but we'll, not we'll, ruled as such. Yeah, we'll get the replay. Obviously, there are no replays in this league. McDonald on the loose puck at the circle. 5.05 left to be played in the second period. No goals so far. Not that there hasn't been stuff to happen or stuff going on in this frame. Up the wing comes Lopez. Glides to create some space. Shot on, blocked. And finds its way somehow around the 200 section level. De Benedette sprints in, gets to the loose puck. Needs somewhere to throw it. Threw it on net. McDonald, the puck skips underneath his stick. Marchesson, De Benedette turning. Turns to the high slot shot just a little bit wide. This building is on edge right now. Radcliffe held up against the wall. 4.28 the time remaining. And they'll lug this out. Yarwood with the dip across the red line. Yarwood handles, dangles, looks for the shot. Wilson the kick save. Dowler stood his ground and works the puck around the dasher. If you are new to hockey and getting into this sport through this, you're getting everything that playoff hockey can offer you. Long pass ahead for Sheehan. He'll leave it in from the red line. Ojic out to play it. Worked around the boards. Robertson tries to separate Parker from it. Kicks it free to the circle. We're under four minutes to go in the second. Boylard will hold it up. Looks for somewhere to go with it. Boylard. Off to Parker. Parker glides in. Puck will kick off the apron of the goal. McDonald to it. 
off the glass. This is gonna be an icing call against the hat tricks. We are still tied, one goal apiece. That takes us finally to the under five. We'll take a breather, come back in a moment from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattrix YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're gonna have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Clancy moving and relocation. Moving is stressful, but it doesn't have to be. Call Clancy. Let them do the heavy lifting, resident and commercial, plus other services, including storage. Remember, Clancy is fancy. That's Clancy moving and relocation. Three minutes, 33 seconds left to go. And I've heard from people who have seen the, who have been able to wind back the broadcast and have been able to see it. It was indeed a no goal from what they have been able to tell. Okay. So we stay tied 1-1. There has been a ton of stuff, a ton of shots, a ton of discussion. Hey, it's not even a lot of shots, right? But there have been some really high danger chances. Yeah, but it, it, it's still amongst that, to me, this game's been about defense. And yep. both teams have really clamped down uh, against each other. It feels, it, it kind of feels like they'd be comfortable, each side would be comfortable trying to win this game 2-1. Schultz plays it in neutral. Looks for the play in Oliveri. Wilson stays in his net. Let's Johnny McDonald come to it. Tries to work this puck free. McDonald can't get this out. 3.05 left to go. Hamalayan spun into the wall. One goal for each team in the first period. Zero goals so far. Not to say that this game has been bereft of things to discuss. Schultz, knocked down by Pamelayan, wanted the pass for Radcliffe and couldn't connect cleanly. Abdella knocks down the clearing attempt forward for DeBenedette, tried to get it forward for Radcliffe and couldn't quite make that play cleanly. Pass thrown behind, Oliveri will settle it. DeBenedette with the stick on it, Oliveri creating some space. Glides it over the hat-trick logo, winds up for the blast, fakes it, goes around his man, turns, nets wide open, and he couldn't get to it cleanly if he could have gotten the wrap around. Kirkby wanted to head off. He stays in, takes the check. Yao tries to get this out. Danbury playing a little lackadaisical as Wilson makes a stick save. That'll bounce over the blue line. This is kind of sloppy play from the hat tricks right here. Glides in over the red line. Fitzgerald will ring it in. Yao out to settle it. Yao wants Radcliffe. Gets fortunate that Benedette's there on the weird bouncing puck. Connects cleanly with Ojik. Ojik in. Ojik turns. Can't get the pass away cleanly. He'll take it behind and threw it to the slot. Lewis was only there for it. A little too long waiting to pull the trigger on the shot or the pass. And Binghamton's offsides with a minute 44 left to go. Yep, Ojik uh, just waited just a little bit too long. Maybe trying to get a little too fancy. Maybe he might have been thinking about, can I make the pass? You know, can I find the trailer? Is he going to be open? But he had a step on everybody, and he had a clear lane to the net, and he probably needed to shoot it when he got to the left circle. He did not, and a good scoring chance, or what appeared to be, ends up to be no shot at all. And we get a face-off here just outside the hat-trick. Blue line, a minute 41 to go in the second, and we remain tied at one apiece. The officials were having a chat with Brian Wilson just to make sure that he was all set and square. Yes, he is. A minute and 41 left to go. The next goal feels enormous. Yeah, later in this game you get. That next goal is gonna be a really big one, whoever gets it. Wilson out of his net, looks to settle it with his stick. Wants the pass up and Falango will tip this out. Sheehan creates a two on two with Kuznetsov on his right hip. To the blue line looking for the tip. It's wide of Sheehan. Falanga looks for it on net. Knocked down by Fitzgerald. Dowler. Receives the play for Binghamton D-men. Yarwood underneath a few guys. Anderson spins with the puck on his backhand, gets it to his front. Still 
handling it. This buck created by Falanga, a good check. Michael Falanga has been in on a number of these sorts of plays, and here's a chance for Binghamton. Insight looking for the tip. Jurich couldn't quite connect with it. Ruiz to the loose puck. Jumping out of the way of that was Gordy Bennell. Tried to throw it across for Kuznetsov and couldn't connect with him. It was picked off by Tyson Kirkby. Oliveri. Pass long ahead. Wilson will just put his glove on it. It's the smart decision with Kirkby bearing down on it. So in that last sequence, great opportunity for Binghamton. Somehow blown assignment by Danbury. Binghamton has an opportunity coming in with the extra men. Anderson came in on left wing, and he should have taken the puck to the net and shot it. There wasn't any defender near him. Instead, he saw Zurich, listen, 300 goal player, saw Zurich cutting to the net, but Zurich was the one guy that was covered, and they were unable to connect on the pass, and it ended up being no harm, no foul for Danbury. But, you know, Anderson there, Punch saved by Wilson, 30 seconds left. Puck loose, right in the crease, and kick to the wall. McKittrick tries to get the clear. Yates, Schultz, Schultz rather, kept it in. Cleared, not quite out. Schultz the shot, blocked. They hit Kirkby on the way in. Kirkby the backhander to Schultz, winds up shot. Tip, Wilson gets a stick on it and paddles it to Xavier Abdella, who will just hold it and hope to burn off some more time. One more chance, Oliveri spins, turns, fires. The puck goes a little bit wide and that winds out the second period with the shot hitting Johnny Ruiz right at the buzzer. This game is tied at one goal apiece. Neither side scored, and yet that was some of the most entertaining hockey that we have had the privilege and at alternate points frustration of calling throughout the course of the season. Yeah, that, there was a lot going on in that second period. The last 33 seconds or so here, not one you're going to put in the Danbury highlight no. film. They were scrambling. Binghamton was all over them. Got a couple good saves out of Brian Wilson there. A couple failed clearing attempts by Danbury. It seemed like the puck just had kept ending up on Schultz's stick on the left wing. And they had good opportunities. They were just unable to put it home. So after 40 minutes of play here in the decisive game three of this best of three series, we remain tied at one apiece. Quite a play, quite a couple of moments and opportunities for one or either of these teams to take the lead. Danbury hit a crossbar, a couple of penalties that the hat tricks didn't like, and a couple of points where Binghamton very nearly took the lead. Brian Wilson looks great. This is everything you could think of and everything you could hope for out of a playoff game with a chance for somebody to win a series and move on. Yeah, the intensity, I think, is ratcheted up. I mean, it was intense in the beginning, but I thought there were tentative moments and some sloppy moments early in the first period. Seems like the teams have settled in right now. I think both teams are playing well through the neutral zone, even better in their own end. You know, we hadn't called Taylor Joseph's name in quite a while till he made that great shorthanded save. And then the Hattricks picked up some momentum after the Ojic penalty. And then Joseph became a little bit of a difference maker as well in the second period. To me, the best player on the ice so far has been Brian Wilson. Yep. But credit to both teams, man. Ed, guys are going down, blocking shots. This is what it's all about. Season hanging in the balance. 20 minutes of regulation hockey to go. Danbury won, Binghamton won. We're going to keep it right here for the intermission festivities. Quick pause back in a moment for Jim Cerny. I'm Chris Lynch. Back in a minute from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Take 
shot. TK's Cafe, home of 76 different flavors of wings. Teriyaki, peanut butter and jelly. You can shoot. Now we're Maui. Kid looks, you know, you look so good up until you shot. All right, here we go. Bailey is going to shoot. And fans, this is five free wings for nobody. Alright, look, we're down to three bucks here. Bailey, you, are you going to do this? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Here we go. Five free wings from TK's is a winner. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Hey, everybody gets five free wings, even the Los Angeles Kings fan up there. Alright, here we go. Hey, fans, it is time for Todd, Maserati, Apple, Romeo, and Danbury, Chuck, and Puff. You land your puck in the bucket, and you are part of a $200 cash prize. The Bennett family has been putting this community behind the wheel of quality vehicles for the past 35 years. Stop by, see Todd, see Amy, ask for Bruce.
Back to Danbury Ice Arena. I am Jim Cerny. Chris Lynch and I calling tonight's game three between the Danbury Hattricks and the Binghamton Black Bears. The winner goes on to play in the Commissioner's Cup final against the Carolina Thunderbirds. The loser, their season will come to a close. We are tied at one after two periods of play. So we got 20 minutes of regulation ahead. And who knows, maybe even more hockey after that. My partner, Chris Lynch, just caught up with Danbury Hattricks forward, Daniel McKittrick. We're here with Daniel McKittrick during the second intermission here at the right. Danbury Ice Arena. And Danny, first could you just comment on the mood and intensity and energy, because it looks like you guys are laying everything on the ice right now. Yeah, we're locked in right now. We're just trying to find that uh, goal 
too good ahead, but we're just uh, keeping it simple, banging bots, and hopefully get a box. And what did you see on the, particularly on the penalty called against Tobias Oja, what did you see as far as how that uh, unfolded? Not too sure when the guy's cut. I don't know how you can embellish that, but we got to battle through, got to even play against the reps. And talk about that last sequence as well when Binghamton very nearly got to it and Brian made a couple of big saves and the sort of plays that he's had to make throughout the course of the game. Yeah, we've been kind of used to it now. He's been huge all year making those big saves, so hopefully some more. What's the feeling of the team going into the third period? We're confident that we still got to just go hard, uh, bang some parties and get the, get the puck deep. 20 more minutes to go. Daniel, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And that is hat tricks forward Daniel McKittrick, who picked up an assist tonight. He's got three points, all assists, in five playoff games so far. The scoring all took place in the first period, 314 in. Binghamton's Samaro's first of the postseason from Yates and Fitzgerald. Binghamton got off to a very nice start, not just the goal, but controlling the play, getting the better of chances, stymieing Danbury the other way. But the Hattricks eventually found their game, and at 9.40, off a turnover, Michael Marchesan tied the game at one apiece, his sixth of the playoffs. He's tied for the FPHL postseason lead in goals with six. Gordy, uh, Gordy Bennell and Daniel McKittrick, who we just heard from there, with the assists on that one. That was all the scoring in the first period. Black Bears out shooting Danbury in the opening 20, 13 to 10. In the second period, no scoring. Hattricks came closest to breaking the tie when Brendan Sheehan from just inside the blue line cranked a one-timer that blew past goalie Taylor Joseph, but he hit the crossbar. The puck came straight out. Binghamton cleared it away, and that's as close as Danbury would get. They had a couple other good opportunities in that second period. Taylor Joseph coming up big had a pretty quiet first half of that period, but in the second half, he came up big several times, including a great shorthanded opportunity for Dan Berry that he turned aside. Each team had eight shots on goal in period number two. So through two periods, the Black Bears are out shooting the hat tricks by the count of 21 to 18, but we remain tied at one apiece. And Chris Lynch rejoins me here in the press box. and. You know, this is it, brother. Yeah. You hear the final 20 minutes of this series, or final 20 minutes of regulation, regulation time in yeah. this series, because as Carolina and Columbus showed us, you could go to overtime or even double, double overtime to decide things as they did in game two when Columbus staved off elimination, or uh, excuse me, Carolina staved off elimination and ended up winning game two, setting up their game three win. And of course, the winner of this series now will play the Thunderbirds in the final. What a wonderful matchup it was between those two. The hockey in the heart of the South. It, hey, it's just great to see good hockey. And it looked like there were great crowds at the Columbus Civic Center and at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. So it's great to see that the Fed is in pretty good and healthy shape that they're getting people into these markets, that they're getting people in and into hockey. In the, you call Connecticut a traditional hockey market. You certainly can call Binghamton a traditional hockey market. North Carolina, you wouldn't think of typically in that way, and Georgia, you wouldn't typically think of in that way. So, A, it's great to see that there was such incredible support for the sport down there. And the caliber of play between those two teams was just fabulous. They gave tremendous effort. The first game... There was some real concern on the Carolina side of things after a 6-1 drubbing in game one. It mirrored this series a little bit in that the team with home ice in game one won very convincingly, and some real work had to go into it by the home team in games two and then three to try and win it. Carolina did complete the job. We still have no clue how this game is going to wrap out. This has been so even and so tight. It feels like one bounce or one miscue is gonna determine how everything goes here. And listen, that that typically is the way it is, right? When you get two evenly matched teams playing a decisive game, and you know, here we are tied after two periods, it's probably gonna be a mistake and or, or a, a bounce or something crazy is gonna happen. And we'll just have to sit back and take it all in and see how it goes. Worth noting, that a guy who played with a lot of jump after that controversial penalty call against Tobias Ojic, the second year pro came out at the penalty box, shot out of a cannon, yep. and played his best hockey of this series. 
after that penalty call. And even though he didn't get rewarded with points, it's some of his best hockey of the season, I would argue, as well. Ab absolutely. And it's been a rough go for him this year with the injuries and everything. He missed months' worth of action with the facial injury that happened back in October. Uh, you know, and he's had other injuries along the way as well. It's been a real stop and start season for him. But he was playing some really good hockey. He's a guy to watch here in the third period. Last year in the elimination game three between these same two teams in the first round, Tobias Ojic stood out, had two goals in that game. So he's a big game guy. He might be the youngest player on the roster, which he is, but he's a big game player as well. And he proved that last season. So I keep an eye on him here in the third period. Tobias Ojic was raised in the school of hard knocks by his well-loved father, the late great Gino Ojic. And he takes after his old man and takes after the spirit of hockey that he presented and the way that he conducted himself. Uh, everyone I've talked to off the ice has said essentially the same thing about Tobias Ojic. Love the guy off the ice. Would hate playing against him if he were on the other team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He comes from that mold of his dad. Yeah. Certainly, Gino Ojic, the longtime enforcer in the NHL guy who I know uh, or knew yeah. very well. May he uh, rest in peace. May he rest in peace. Absolutely. One of the good guys. Um, but, you know, Tobias is a little bit of a smaller guy. He's not as big as his dad. I mean, his dad was, you know, a massive man. Uh, Tobias is a smaller guy. So to me, he reminds me a little bit more of like that Brad Marchand. Just that yeah. pass. He's going he's gonna to keep gnawing away at you, gnawing away at you. But, hey, don't sleep on him because, A, he'll drop the gloves with you, or, B, he can pop a goal or two on you as well. You know, he's put up some good numbers both this season and last season, his first two as a pro. So, again, Tobias Ojic, uh, certainly a guy to watch. One of five guys on the hat tricks in the lineup tonight that played in that decisive game three against Binghamton a year ago, joining the captain, Johnny Ruiz, alternate captain, Gordy Bennell, defenseman, Johnny McDonald, and also uh, Dmitry Kuznetsov. And there are five Binghamton players that played in that game as well that are playing here tonight. Juric, Kirkby, Fitzgerald, Boyland, and Yarwood. These teams have built up quite the rivalry. It's the closest team from Danbury's perspective. This is geographically their closest opponent. That's not actually the case for Binghamton. Elmira is geographically closer, but over the course of these last two years, especially with Elmira not having a team in the Fed last season and with the Mammoth rejoining this year, these two units have developed such a tight rivalry against each other where like, there is some real animosity and they don't like each other when they're playing, but they're still such a real respect because yes. both of yeah. these teams know that the other is good enough to beat them. Absolutely. I mean, these two teams are pretty evenly matched all the way through. You know, nice mixtures of veterans and younger players on both sides. And I got to tell you, two terrific goaltenders. Yes. And, they, you know, these last two games, these guys are not making mistakes. Taylor Joseph has been outstanding for Binghamton, and so too has been Brian Wilson, who of course has had just a, a record-setting season in the Fed this year, but also in these playoffs has been very, very good these past two games as, you know, now we're playing the video of Tobias Ojic when he went to the penalty box, cut in the mouth, bleeding badly, and what we thought was going to be, could have been a major five-minute power play for Danbury, because you get hit with a high stick and you get cut. That is five minutes, right? Or at worst, four minutes. For a double, a double minor, minor. For a high right? stick and drawing blood. Yeah, absolutely. So at least the four minute double minor. And instead, it gets flipped on its head and you're killing a two minute minor somehow because they called Ojik for the embellishment. That's for later. That's yep. now in the past, because if you're Danbury, you just gotta look ahead to these 20 minutes because the season could be decided right here in regulation. And if not Chris Lynch, then you and I are gonna work some overtime tonight. In no small part also, you have to give Danbury credit after that Ojek penalty. Danbury proceeded to kill the full penalty. They have been perfect to this point on the penalty kill. They have been outchanced on the power play opportunities four to one, though one of them for Binghamton was only 15 seconds long because they took another penalty 
as part of it, but on the, on paper, being outchanced by a pretty sizable margin on power play opportunities. Yeah, I, absolutely. And and here's the thing, too. Danbury wants to stay out of the box here. Yep. You don't want to tempt fate again. Binghamton had the top power play in the regular season, and four of their nine goals in this series have come with an extra man. Three on the power play, and then one with the goalie pulled in game two. So you don't want to give them those extra opportunities. You want to play this five on five. Here we go. Lucas to Benedet will take the draw against Chad Lopez. The puck is dropped. We're underway. Danbury skating from left to right across her internet waves. Dowler lays a check, and immediately this is being ruled as a hand pass. So we'll do the face off at center ice again. Danbury sending a message. Dowler running directly into, is that Schultz that he hit? Looked like it was Schultz. Yeah. Running headlong into a pretty large individual. Yeah, a pretty large individual running into a pretty large individual. <laughs> Winds up blocked by Michael Marchesson. These guys have been getting in the way of a lot of blocked shots. We don't have those immediately on hand, but I'd love to see the blocked shots counter. Oh, it, it, it's a lot and a lot. A lot for both teams. Dowler lays his check. Marchesson separates his man from the puck as well. Radcliffe will get to control it. Leaves it for McDonald, who leads the break. McDonald across the blue line. Drops it for Marchesson. Turns, fires. Joseph got it. Knocked it straight up top. Puck sits at the circle. I thought that might have been called for an out for hitting the protective netting, but we play on instead. Turns at the circle. Spot on and saved by Brian Wilson. And immediately... Some pushing and shoving. Pamelean in the middle of it for Danbury. 50 seconds in and we get our first stoppage. Yeah, Pamelean just got a whole face wash right there at the end of the whistle. I'm not sure who is delivering it there. It's Don Olivieri who yeah. they have to separate from him. Yeah, the big face wash there on uh, Pamelean. But again, no harm, no foul. And now Oliveri is having a few words with the official who wants to hear none of it. He just pointed him away. Yep. And the faceoff will be to the left of Brian Wilson. First good scoring opportunity of the period that went to Danbury. Quick snapshot by Michael Marchison and a good pad save by Taylor Joseph. Ruiz won the draw from Samaro. Nick Kittrick, the puck ran away from him, trying to catch up to it. Samaro caught and pickpocketed him. Yates, McKittrick will knock it back over the blue line. Bunnell dips it to Ruiz. Here comes the captain. Ruiz glides in. And out of real estate, Binghamton packing the lane and not allowing any easy or clean shots for Danbury. Puck to the circle. Ruiz, his puck gets knocked straight high. Bunnell tries to catch it on his stick. Settles it. Yao catches it. Has to wait. Lobs it in. And Taylor Joseph will catch it and play it out to Fitzgerald. We're a minute 30 in. We're tied 1-1. The winner of this game goes on to the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. Schultz hits the official, lost the handle on the puck. Sheehan gets interrupted by Jurich. Ojek to Kuznetsov, the puck sneaks underneath his stick. Pamelayan kept it on, and the puck bounces away from Jurich long enough to force him to hold up. Puck to the Binghamton bench, Anderson, out of the worst of a check. Drops it for Schultz. Schultz turns, looks for the shot. It's off of Wilson's blocker. The official takes a bit of a hit from Sheehan as well. Brett Parker looking for it. Pamelayan defending him. Parker the drop pass. Pamelayan the hit to lose the puck. Turning and looking for something. Oliveri goes down. Blocker is saved by Wilson. Turning, trying to get something cleanly. Sheehan will chip it forward. And Yarwood is back for it to deny the breakout for Tobias Ojik. Danbury will settle it at their face-off dot. Hamelan over the middle for Kuznetsov. We'll put it off the glass. It'll run on. Fitzgerald has to control it. Has the pass to the wall. Mac Lewis spins out of a hit from Lucas to Benedet. The goal scoring is simple. Samaro for Binghamton. Marcia Son. As this is going to be an icing call. Whew. That's a bit of a mistake on the long pass to... Give yourself a defensive zone face-off. And Binghamton's been really good on the on the draws in this one. So there's a big face-off here. De Benedette will take it for the hat tricks. 
And he wins it. Good job by Lucas De Benedet. Won it away from Lopez. Radcliffe over the middle. Puck bouncing. Arrowwood down. Hat tricks are off sides. They're going to say Marsha Song's a bit quick, jumping across the blue line. And we are exactly three minutes into the third. Yeah, the linesman was right on that one. And, uh, you know, the puck was flipped high in the air and it was bouncing and then, you know, hit a stick right before, or hit a skate right before the blue line. So Marcia's son can't anticipate that and he just went in slightly ahead of the play. Lopez wins the draw in neutral ice. Yarwood will run it forward. Yarwood has been in the middle of a number of Binghamton offensive chances. Puck poked off his stick, flipped up, and threw Lopez's outstretched glove. Fitzgerald will settle it. Rung round the dasher, Wilson out of his net to settle it, hands off for Dowler. Up for Radcliffe, got through him. Yates, Schultz, and Oliveri dips his way free. Glides in, shot, got nothing on it, got blocked. Radcliffe hit by Dowler. Where's the puck? It's to the slot, drops it, Schultz, shot, tipped upstairs. Goes to the circle. Tyson Kirkby will turn and look to try and create something out of this. Ruiz and McDonald trying to get the puck out. Binghamton has had most of the play in their offensive end here in the third of this point. Wilson has stood tall. Radcliffe and Bennell. Bennell will glide in, takes the puck in, waits for reinforcements. Gordy Bennell holds it. He'll ring it around. Taylor Joseph got a stick on it. And Schultz, the first guy there to receive it for Binghamton. Hat tricks have not had an awful lot of offensive zone time. They had the one chance to start the period, and since then, we have been at the Binghamton offensive end. Lobbed in, Ojik goes and gives chase. Dropped it to the circle, threw it right to the tape of Parker. Here comes Brett Parker, lobbed in, off the glass. Yao and Falanga back for it. Yao won the race to the puck, and Xavier Abdella will pick it up. Binghamton back in defense. Sheehan over the middle. Brendan Sheehan tries to create some space at the circle. Sheehan goes in, backhand shot. Puck sits and gets kicked by Fitzgerald to the corner wall. Falanga tried to lift it across. Binghamton will get this out. Pamelan can't control it. Fitzgerald can't handle the pinballing puck. Pass for Ojik. Chance for a two on two. Ojik, the pass forward for Sheehan, and they couldn't play it cleanly. They'll have to go off for a line change. Danbury not quite connecting. They get one of these and finish it off. Then they're in business. At the other end, looking for the tip. They almost score. The puck just barely trickles wide off of Anderson's stick. A great setup by Jurich. Pass across neutralized for Marchesson. Drags it, looks to create some room. Ran out of real estate. Radcliffe goes to get it. Radcliffe and Marchesson can't combine for it. End to end we go. De Benedette will cut it off in neutral. For a second, Binghamton tries to gain it. They're on sides. Oliveri dips through Robertson. The backhander goes through Wilson and to the wall. Gathered and kept down at the line by Mac Lewis. Chipped in, and where is it? It's on Lopez's tape. He turns, he fires, he puts it a little bit high and over the crossbar. To the point for Schultz, he'll step into it. Plays to the top, shot wide of Wilson's net. It's a shooting gallery, and Wilson will cover up the puck with 14.05 to go. In the final stanza, it takes us to our first media timeout of the period. Quick pause back in a second from the Danbury Ice Arena. Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury is the premier automobile partner in the Danbury area. Located on Newtown Road, the Bennett family has been putting the community behind the wheel for over 35 years. Dream big, drive a Maserati or Alfa Romeo. New and pre-owned vehicles available. Let Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo of Danbury be your choice. Todd Maserati Alfa Romeo, the official uniform sponsor and scoreboard sponsor of the Danbury Hat Tricks. A clean face-off win for Johnny Ruiz. Puck rung round the dasher. Bunnell drops it to Xavier Abdella. Danbury having a very hard time getting out of their own end. Long pass ahead. They got it to the red line and no further. 
whacked in. Wilson will stick it for Abdella. Xavier Abdella gets checked. The puck is loose. Jared Yao got on it, gets crunched. Jared Yao got hammered. Ruiz tries to create a chance for this puck to come free. Yao staying out there. That's a huge hit taken by Yao. Yeah, Lopez delivered it, kept his arms in. Looked like a clean hit. He just absolutely leveled Sheehan. Jared Yao. Wow. That's the hardest hit of the game to this point. Binghamton will glide it on. Schultz drops the pass for Lopez inside. Schultz tries to tip it through. Ojik will get to the loose puck. We're still tied at one goal apiece. Everybody having fun yet? Ojik runs on. Tobias Ojik circle shot. Puts it just a little bit over the crossbar. McDonald can't handle it. That's a real big bit of misfortune. A chance the other way. In. Kirkby. The shot. Backhander. Stopped by Wilson. And the puck will kick back up to the point. Oliveri gets through Ojik. Rides in. Tries to create some space. Puck is free. Ojik. A two on one with Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov running on. Ojik. Can't receive it. Couldn't get the pass through. Frantic. Frantic play as we're desperate to find a winner here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Oliveri. Through Kuznetsov, backhands this out, kick through, Marchesson with the Benedet. Marchesson can't control it, the puck bounced a little bit away from him. Danbury has the beginnings of chances and unable to finish them, either because of mistakes or bad bounces. Binghamton's off sides, they have to regroup. Riley Robertson will come through. The chance is let's go hat tricks to Benedet. Tries to lug his way through. Lucas to Benedet will flip this on, gathered up. This is a hockey game, everybody. Parker gained the line, couldn't do it cleanly. Radcliffe across for Marcia Son, a three on one. Marcia Son drags through, handles, ran out of real estate. He couldn't get the puck back to his forehand for the shot. Danbury unable to get a clean shot on Taylor Joseph with 11.43 left to go here in the third. What a great back check there by Jesse Anderson at Binghamton. Wow. That was a three on two opportunity, a rare odd man advantage, odd man rush for Danbury. Dowler will put this a little bit wide. Ruiz tips it low for Gordy Bunnell. Ruiz tries to control it. Ruiz to his backhand, puck going right across. Dowler winds up, looks for the shot, he scores! The puck bounces up top. Dowler stepped into it, shot it. That may have gotten tipped. Let's see that right. That may have gotten tipped. It's on its way right there, I think. It caught Daniel McKittrick. This might be McKittrick's goal. Yeah. That might, yeah, that's McKittrick's goal that tips off his stick in the slot. This is Daniel McKittrick's goal, but who cares who scored it? The hat tricks in the lead midway through the third. Get the puck to the net. Shoot the puck, get it to the net. That's what you gotta do. And the hat tricks in a period that so far they've been a little bit outplayed by Binghamton, now have taken a two to one lead. Their first lead of the night here in game three. Looks for it on sight, shot on, save made. It is being ruled as Dowler's goal. It's being ruled as Brendan Dowler's goal to the circle. Schultz couldn't control it. Falanga trying to get this out. Ruiz gets the assist on it. Lopez turns, wants the backhander. Puck sits. It's right at the top of the crease. Can they get it out? Binghamton will get to it. 10-25 left. Ojik knocks him down. Falanga takes the check. And we're across. We're 10-20 left. Here's a chance for Binghamton. Slot, block, bouncing puck. Trying to clear it. It's playing like a pinball machine in the 80s. Turning and looking. Radcliffe will get this out. Marchison cheating behind. Marchison runs on. Marchison spins with it. Hands off. Radcliffe. Save made by Joseph. What an unbelievable save by Taylor Joseph. This game has everything. What a save by Taylor Joseph. And let me tell you, if Binghamton comes back to tie this game, or if they come back to win this game, you are gonna remember that save because that could have been the dagger right there in such a tight checking, close game. 
already trailing by a goal, only 10 minutes remaining in the period. That 3-1 goal would have been the dagger, you would think. What a save by Joseph. Wow. And it's what a setup by Marchesan to Ratcliffe. It's one of the plays of the season. If it's a goal, it's on the highlight reel for the rest of all of their lives. It's on Taylor Joseph's highlight reel forever as Kirkby gets crunched by Yao. Yates fumbles with the puck, still with it. Yates turns up top. Fitzgerald steps into it, looks for it in the slot. Can't connect. Yarwood pulls up. Fitzgerald steps into it, shot wide of Wilson. Yao creates some space and pitchforks the puck into Binghamton ice. This has enough steam to turn into an icing. That's not the worst icing you can take, but still face off in Danbury Ice at the other side of the media timeout. Quick pause back in a moment. 2-1 Danbury in the lead. Here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Litchfield Distillery is the spirit of hard work. The Bachelors of Litchfield Distillery, in honor of the early farmers of Northwest Connecticut, present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. Grab it at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the hat tricks who lead it two to one here in the third period, 9-19 to play. The hat tricks win, they go on to their first Commissioner's Cup Championship Series appearance. A lot of hockey still to be played. Jared Yao tried to ring the puck out, but now falls to his feet, gets back up. Yates at the blue line. Yates pulling in, drops it to the circle, wants Schultz. Right on top of it was Radcliffe. Lucas DeBenedet, who has been a terror of these playoffs, creates some room for himself. DeBenedet tried to take on a bond to the defense and just ran out of real estate. Danbury changing lines on the fly. McKittrick seeing some time right here. Abdella. Tries to use the net as a shield, gets caught up to by Yates. Abdella uses his strength and has Ruiz to help him out. Ruiz off for Abdella, looking for an outlet. 8.35 left to go, a bad turnover. Diffused, nearly a real mess, and a chance for Falanga the other way. Ruiz trailing him, Falanga in, Ruiz shot wide. Falanga tries to get to the loose puck and goes cradling into the boards. Dowler will step in, Dowler turns, fires, his shot is blocked by Parker, looking for what would have been his second goal of the game. This will get cleared by Jurich, and this, no, no icing. They are going to say that was tipped by a Danbury stick, so the clock keeps running. There is entirely too much time if you're a hat trick or a hat trick supporter to feel comfortable with this score. Up the wing, Sheehan will knock it free. Brendan Sheehan runs on. Kuznetsov with him on his right, Sheehan. Runs hard into the boards. Kuznetsov to the puck. Up to the point. McDonald the shot. Blocked down before it ever got on net. Standing in its way was Andrew Logar. And everybody laying themselves out and giving what they have. Fitzgerald will leave it low. Dowler comes over to make a play on it. Dowler off the wall. Tobias Ojik gets to it. Ojik runs on for the loose puck and will flip it in with 7.28 left to go. Tick, 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 tick. There are too many sands in that hourglass for the Hattricks to feel comfortable with this. Pamela on the smart and mature play. Marchesan will sprint to it. Oliveri got to it, but not without Marchesan bearing down his, the back of his neck. Almost great to turn over on Schultz. Here come the Black Bears. Cross the blue line. Backhander to Kirkby at the circle. Wants the wraparound, tries it. Wilson the stop. He lost his stick at the circle. Binghamton. Winds up, Schultz, the shot, it's wide. Wilson holding a defenseman stick. That shot sailed over the crossbar. He still has Abdella's stick. He'll reach over and get it as the puck comes back out to neutral ice. And Binghamton will regroup with 6.45 left to go, trailing 2-1. Schultz, his shot is blocked. Nobody knew where it was. It's sitting on the Binghamton defensive end of the red line. Puck nearly free. Jurich will ring it in. Jared Yao comes over to make a play on this and clears it. This is going to be another icing with 6.23 left 
in the period. 2-1 Danbury. This place is up for grabs right now, Jim Cerny. Well, this place is not up for grabs. This is a Danbury wow. crowd, but this game is still up for grabs. What a save by Brian Wilson wow. on the wraparound that he lost to stick, making that great save. And a really smart play. Puck came back to the left point. Schultz on purpose shot it off the back wall to have a carom to Kirkby, who is wide open in the right circle. He had Wilson down and out, and he shot it high and wide. A big missed opportunity for Binghamton. And we noted yesterday these boards have some life. <coughs> excuse me, have some life to them. Offsides called. With 6:15 to go here in the third period, the hat tricks with a two to one lead. Their first lead of the night came at 8.42 of the third. Brendan Dowler, his first goal of the playoffs. Johnny Ruiz and Gordy Pinnell with the assist. And how about the veteran Gordy Pinnell stepping up to the plate tonight in the biggest game of the season. He has assisted on each goal. And in fact, Dowler, that's, his, that's not only his first goal, it's his first point of the postseason in any shape or form. A guy that did not play in game one of the playoffs against Elmira but has played the last four with Gonzalez out with an injury. This is an icing call against Binghamton. That's a mistake by the Black Bears. Absolutely it is. Just barely on the wrong side of the red line. 5.52 the time remaining. This game has had a little bit of everything, I tell you. If you come away from this and hockey's just not your thing after this, then hockey's just not your thing because this has had everything you could hope for out of a great, great playoff hockey game. Sheehan on the draw, tries to move the puck forward. Fitzgerald holds it on the apron of the goal. Fitzgerald will run it up along the wing. Fitzgerald gets through Kuznetsov originally, not through Pamelayan. Jurich has to wait. Falanga on the puck, gets checked. Jurich plays it to the slot. Sheehan got his stick in the right spot, flips it to neutral. Belanga, and I've been especially impressed here in the third period, Zach Pamelayon has made a number of excellent plays with his stick to blow up chances for the Black Bears. And has done a good job too when he clears the puck out, not icing it, has had a nice touch. Belanga offered to Benedek, creates some space to Benedek, shot too high, catches the glass. Had exactly the right idea, just sailed it a little bit too high over the crossbar. Loose puck, Marchesson tried to go ahead, the puck jumped away from him. Drops it to the point, turns, shot blocked by Johnny McDonald. Five minutes left to go on the dot. Puck flown into Binghamton Ice. Marchison turns and leaves it low. 4.50 the time remaining here in the third. Looking for the outlet, up the wing. On comes Logar, Logar shot onto the protective netting. That will take us to the under five media timeout. Danbury in the lead, 2-1. The final stretch of game three between Danbury and Binghamton on the other side from the Danbury Ice Arena. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde across the puck. We're gonna have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Well, Stony Hill Dental Care is served as the leader and preferred provider of dental care in Bethel, Connecticut. Go see Dr. K. He'll make you look like a million bucks and feel like it too. He's the official team dentist of your Danbury Hattricks and Chris Lynch. The Danbury Hattricks, four minutes, 41 seconds away from their first appearance in the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. That is a lot of hockey ahead. They lead it two to one. The goalie is, oh, Joseph is going back in, so they haven't pulled him yet, oh, but yeah, you, keep you an eye on that. Yeah, you can't take take the risk. I, you know, probably not until you get to around two minutes, and uh, probably under two minutes. Especially with the offensive firepower that Binghamton has. You have to trust that these guys who have delivered all season for the Black Bears, they have to trust that their offense is good enough, and Danbury has to trust that their defense is good enough. This has the legs to turn into an icing, and it does. 4.33 left. The chance is let's go hat tricks. Yeah, and, and if you're Danbury here, you got to keep your composure. Yep. It cannot be a series of win a face-off or get the puck in your own end and ice it, ice it, ice it, because that's the type thing that will catch up to you. 
Yeah. Face off to the right of Wilson here. And Johnny wins another one. Another one won cleanly. Bounces out. Bennell sprinting in. Yarwood's going to win the race. It was coffin cornered. Bennell tried to get to the loose puck. Bennell with the big hit away from the play. Picked off. McKittrick keeps it on the blue line. He'll ring it around the dasher. Fitzgerald, the puck bounces over his stick. Ruiz takes the check. Ruiz just keeping the puck there. Smart play. Burn time. The clock is meant to be burnt at this point. Yeah, almost four minutes, down to four minutes now. Ruiz is going to head off. The Ojic line on the ice. Yates grabs it, runs. Yates turns and rings it around the dasher too far for Samaro to make a play on it. Puck bounces, Sheehan tries to do something with it. Ojek from the right side of the red line. 3.40 left. Time running out on the Black Bear season. Not quickly enough for the hat tricks liking. Anderson cleared away. Sheehan off the glass. Joseph still in his net, we'll keep an eye on that and tell you when he heads off for the Black Bears final push. Ojik tries to keep it on the offensive blue line. Lopez runs on. Dowler defending him. Lopez get, can't get through. Dowler gets crunched. Where's the puck? Lopez is still down, and the whistle will sound with 3.09 left to go. Lopez got crunched. Yeah, he went down awkwardly in that corner, and the trainer's going to come out and look at him. Lopez, who has really been shut down in these two games here in Danbury now up to a knee shaken up after that big hit by Brendan Dowler I don't think this is going to get ruled as a penalty no, there was no, nothing there's, ruled by the no, officials there's, there's no penalty here just a hard hit hard hit it'll be a defensive and, zone face off in the hat trick end. yeah and there's been listen big hits back and forth especially as this game has progressed along and Jerry Diaw has been yep. on the receiving end of two of them. I was about to reference the one he took right behind his <laughs> oh, own yeah. where he got cleaned. When Lopez cleaned his clock yep. with the big hit, and now Lopez is on the receiving end, and the Texas native is good to see. Skating back to the bench without his helmet, but he's all right. Yep. And the faceoff will be to the right of Brian Wilson. We're down to three minutes, nine seconds to go here. Big faceoff to Benedett and Kirkby to take the draw. It's the top offensive producing line for the hat tricks. who have also been responsive, responsible defensively as DeBenedet will ring it. It's rung around for Marchesson. He'll tip it out to neutral space. Black Bears are offsides. They have to wait. Puck bounces to the hat trick bench. Exactly three minutes left. Danbury trying to slam the door on Binghamton season for the second year in a row. Dowler tries to force the puck free. Where is it? It's gotten to by Tyson Kirkby. 2.45 left to Benedette tying up with Kirkby. Up to Schultz at the point. Schultz will play it over to Oliveri. Steps into some space, turns, fires. That's off the back of the play here. Wow, that was close and nearly bounced on. He caught the apron of the goal at the point. Across to Schultz at the top of the circle. Steps into a shot, blocked by McDonald and blocked out to neutral space. Right to center, Taylor Joseph was starting to head out and couldn't because of where the puck ended up being. Xavier Abdella will run to and get this puck with 2.15 left. Leaves it for Brendan Dowler. Joseph still waiting to actually be able to leave. Dowler knocks it down, but now with the kick backwards to Lucas De Benedet. Has Xavier Abdella on the left. Looks for the clear. This doesn't have the legs to turn into an icing. Two minutes left to go. Danbury in the lead, 2-1. Taylor Joseph waiting to head on out. This won't be an icing. Wilson tried to get the clear. The net is empty for the Binghamton Black Bears. Fitzgerald on from the bench. Yarwood to the circle. Fitzgerald low. Fitzgerald will receive it backwards. Yarwood turns, plays it up top, wants the shot. It's low. It's underneath Kirkby. He's still got it. A minute 30 left to go. Binghamton looking for the tie. Danbury trying to slam the door shut. Minute 28 left to go. Oliveri holds it. Winds up, they are patient, they are taking their time. Circle shot, blocked before it ever got on Wilson. Thrown out into neutral space. 
Danbury will get a partial line change as Kirkby has to wait. He'll ring it around. It'll bounce to the apron of the goal. Jared Yao can't get it through Kirkby, who slid to keep it there. Bounces right across the Danbury defensive end of the ice. Cleared out. Ojik sprinting. Gets to the loose puck. Tobias Ojik can't put it in on the empty net. Marshawson gets to it. He'll turn and fire. That shot is blocked. Xavier Abdella will settle it. Fire it on net. Blocked down by Yarwood. 50 seconds left to go in regulation time. Marshawson breaks it up. The puck sits against the wall. It's under Lopez. Puck is free. Where is it? Sheehan steers it to the Binghamton bench. Sheehan turns, fires, and just barely misses the open cage. 35 seconds left. Danbury clinging to a 2-1 lead. Puck's knocked down. Ojik ends the Black Bears season with the empty netter. Danbury will play for the Commissioner's Cup. It's Bedlam at the Danbury Ice Arena. How fitting that Tobias Ojik puts him away with the empty net goal. How fitting. And now he goes and he hugs Brian Wilson back in his own end. Wow. Here's that play. Here's the empty netter. Fired it right on net. Got to it. Knocked it down off of the club play by Schultz. Wow. 31 seconds left to be played in regulation time. Danbury calls for time and the Danbury hat tricks. Score two goals here in the third period. They are 31 seconds away from officially moving on to the Commissioner's Cup Championship. Book the plane tickets for Winston-Salem. At the rate we're going, game one is at the Fairgrounds Annex. This place is shaking. You can see the guys who are sitting for tonight's game, like Brandon Daigle and Connor Woolley and Kyle Gonzalez and Daniel Amesbury. They want to be there with their friends, their brothers in arms. And don't you, don't you tell me there's no such thing as home ice advantage. In this you sport, lose in this league, yes. 6-1 on the road in game one and come back like the Hattricks did in this electric atmosphere two consecutive games against a terrific opponent. And the Hattricks oh, almost oh. put it in on the empty net. Gordy, Gordy. Bennell just put it off the pipe. And oh. Gordy could use one. We could use one more goal. Boy, as Gordy's well. been great tonight, though. 15 seconds left. Puck bounces up and out. That caught the protective netting up top off of Riley Robertson's stick. And nope, nope, Lewis and Robertson having a couple of words. You just want to make sure that nothing messy happens. Just make sure that you get, if you're Danbury, you are thinking get to the end of this game. 13.7 seconds to go. And it's right there for the taking for the hat tricks up 3-1. About to head to their first Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. And it'll be against the Carolina Thunderbirds, who were the 2019 Fed League champions. The Ojik empty net goal, an unassisted tally. Knocked down, Bennell and Anderson. Bennell's still down on top of it. The whistle will sound. Hard feelings starting to spill over as Kirkby just trying to keep some semblance of pieces. Schultz. The couple of words for Michael Marchesson. The officials will pull Lewis out of it. Lewis is going to be sent into the hat, into the penalty box with 7.6 left. They'll drop the puck in Binghamton Ice. They will end this series on the penalty kill. And listen, we're going to talk a lot about the hat tricks, of course, going on to the final but a heck of a team, this Binghamton Black Bear team. Goodness, goodness, goodness. They gave Dan Murray everything they could handle and just a little bit more in game one. Gave him quite a fight as Taylor Joseph skates back into his crease. A wonderful effort in the second season of existence in the FBHL for the 
Look at the bench, Binghamton the Danbury Black Bears, bench. The hat trick bench, they are ready to jump on the ice. They'll throw it on net, Joseph kicks it out. That is that. They make sure the officials stay away and it does not matter. The Danbury hat tricks have won the Empire Division's championship series. And the hat tricks rush onto the ice to go and party. Malanga waves goodbye to the Black Bears and their fans and the hat tricks will celebrate for the second year in a row. Danbury has eliminated the Binghamton Black Bears. And for the first time in franchise history, for the first time since 2016, when the Danbury Titans called this building home, the Commissioner's Cup will be up for grabs here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Indeed it will be. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty awesome scene for the fans, for the players, even the guys who are not in the lineup tonight. And here's what I was thinking when Brendan Dowler scored that goal is something Billy McCreary and I have talked about so much this season. What sets the Stanberry team apart, and there are a lot of things that do. One is they have an incredibly deep roster. Yep. And they're healthy now, meaning in the playoffs, they are scratching guys every night that are deserving of playing, of being in the lineup. That's how deep they are. Brendan Dowler was scratched in game one, a guy that had been a regular on defense pretty much the entire season. And he was scratched in game one, got back in the lineup due to the injury to Kyle Gonzalez, played the last four games, and what happens? It's one of those guys, right? One of those guys. Not that Johnny Ruiz wasn't great tonight, not that Michael Marchesson wasn't great tonight, not that Brian Wilson wasn't great tonight, but the winning goal just speaks to the depth that Billy McCreary has has created here with the Danbury hat tricks. Confetti on the ice from section 200 as the hat tricks go through the handshake line. Jared Yao took a number of hits. There's Connor Woolley who scored a game winner against Delaware, not in the lineup. And the Danbury hat tricks are moving on. They'll be booking their flight tickets to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to play the Thunderbirds and compete for a championship. And you know, if these two teams, right, when you think about them, you think about, boy, what, what great offensive talent. Boy, these two teams can light it up, right? But then you see a game like tonight and you realize how great these two teams are. A 2-1 final with outstanding goaltending, terrific defense, I thought, on both sides. A lot of will on both sides, and the hat tricks were just that much better. And they come away with the 3-1 win tonight, including the empty netter from Tobias Ojic. And the party is on here at Danbury Ice Arena. A couple of other guys who I feel deserve a special mention. Riley Robertson only had one point in his regular season performance in which he played 25 games in a hat tricks uniform. He has three points in five postseason games. That man won the Commissioner's Cup just last season with the Watertown Wolves. He wants to do it again, and he has been such a big lift. He had a couple plays in this game where he was willing to lay a big old check or clear the puck and get it to the right spot. Tobias Ojic had empty netters both games here at home, and this is, it took every single thing that the Danbury Hattricks had to offer in order to beat the Black Bears. They are that good. They were capable right to the very end of winning this series. They showed, they won game one 6-1. It was not that close. Yeah, and, and the way the Hattricks handled the adversity, Billy McCreary told me, and it was in the story I wrote for the website yesterday, Billy McCreary said, I've never been more confident going into a game than I was game two at Danbury Ice Arena against the Binghamton Black Bears. He said, I've never been more confident. I never believed in a team more than I believed in my team in game two. That's what he knows about what makes up this team. Not only the talent of the players, but it's the will. And that's what, that, that's what Billy preaches, is the will is, is almost more important than the skill. And to that end, Brendan Dowler, who scored the game-winning goal tonight, 
is the one who gets to hoist the barrel and the hat tricks celebrate. They are going to the Commissioner's Cup Championship. Look at Johnny Ruiz playing to the crowd. He is yeah. fired up. Dowler got to lift the barrel. You could have given it to Brian Wilson. There's Wilson's helmet just sitting on the ice right at the faceoff dot. Yeah, Wait. they're going to have the three stars in a little bit. Uh, here's a little cheat. I feel pretty good that you're going to hear Brian Wilson's name mentioned. I think that's a pretty reasonable <laughs> assessment. 27 saves on 28 shots faced. First went in. One of the earliest shots of the game went in, and he was perfect the rest of the way, including a sequence at the very end of that second period, which got real scrambly and a real mess. The bell in Melanie Frankel's honor rings. The players go through and give it a good, good sound. These yeah, everybody, guys, everybody, yeah. whether they played tonight or not, whether they're in uniform tonight or not, everybody is ringing that bell right now. And and this I love, you know, Billy McCreary's out there with his daughter, having her celebrate the moment as well. And I love Billy going around to every section of the arena and doffing the fedora, saluting the crowd as well. Because Billy would be the first guy to always tell you that it's about family. This organization, the fan base, everything he's wanted to create since he came here four years ago is about family, building a big family. And that's within the community, that's the fan base, and it's the players. And he, he's told me several times, Sometimes I'll take a player that may not be, player B may not be as good as player A, but if he's got the will and he's willing to be a part of how we do things in this organization, I'm gonna take player B over player A. And that's just, it's awesome. It, it's, it's a great way to build a family and an organization. And you see the final two guys on the ice are the guys that are original members of the Danbury Hattricks both in their third seasons with the organization, Johnny Ruiz and Gordy Bennell. Here are the three stars of the game. Three assists for number nine. Gordy Bennell had assists on all three of the hat trick goals. Came in with one assist, one point through the course of the postseason previously and comes through big time. The game-winning goal, Brendan Dowler rings the bell and comes on out. He'll sprint around. The Marbledale, Connecticut native, playing for a local team. A rookie from the University of Southern Maine and shows up in a huge way here tonight. And, of course, the number one star of the game tonight. And the backbone of the Danbury Hattricks all season, Brian Wilson. 27 saves on 28 shots faced, all of them big, big pressure. The Danbury Hattricks will be going to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to play the Thunderbirds. Finals will be getting started this upcoming weekend down in the heart of North Carolina. Yeah, down in Winston-Salem. Yeah, beautiful place down there in the great state of North Carolina. I have never been to that great state. I'm looking forward to being able to make the trip. We will be showing every single Danbury Hattricks finals game right here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us throughout the course of the weekend, the course of the postseason, and the ride is not over. A 3-1 final, the Danbury Hattricks secure a spot in the Commissioner's Cup Championship Series. For everybody with the Danbury Hattricks organization, for everybody in the city of Danbury, and for my partner in crime here on the broadcast, Jim Cerny, I'm Chris Lynch. We hope you have enjoyed your time with us this evening. Be warm, be well wherever you may be. We will see you for the finals in North Carolina.